right, here we are. We are live. Honestly, guys, I did, I was not trying to double, triple dip on this stream. I really wasn't. <laughs> but I get three streams out of it, right? All right, we got to hurry up and put up this poll, though. What's up, PR? First, PR's first. That's only because I told, uh, you're still pissed. Uh, I hear you, man. That was, oh, you know what? All right, I know a lot of people thought this should be the main event. But it is the co-main. And it is a great co-main. Jo with Joaquin Buckley, Vicente Luque. Now, remember Luque, I'm honestly not super uh, comfortable with Vicente Luque fighting right now. Like, I'm really not. Uh, after that aneurysm he had, whatever was going on with his brain, like, it was not good. All right, poll is up, but Vicente Luque is a much better all-around martial artist. So I think that's why you see the odds so closely. I think if this fight had, if this fight had been booked like a couple years ago, Luque is probably what minus four hundred. And when I bet Sakai versus Arlovsky, Mike, this puts that to shame, right? I hear you, man. All right, three drinks and two edibles. We're going to have a night, guys. We're going to have a fucking night. Here we go. What's up? All right, Josh, let's go. Why? Understandable. Yes, and we're back. I got Luke says Phil. All right. Let's see. All right, just six of you voting so far. Get over there and vote. 67% for Luque, 33% for Buckley. The poll is up right now, and guys, I, I'm i smashed. <laughs> it's going to be a night. <laughs> Did I just say it was going to be a night? Was that all? I meant to say like it was going to be a great night or something, but Luque sub. Oh, I picked Luke a sub, Wyatt. Damn it, you picked the same? I'm not going to catch you ever. Son of a... Couldn't stick around and tell people to go here because our mobile stream it ends right away as soon as you leave. Good to know. Thank you, Robert. It's the DC and Chell show. Oh, is the DC and Chell show good? I haven't watched it yet, Billy. Can't imagine anything with Chell P. Sonin not being good, though. Not like the normal stream where I can talk after you leave. Ah, okay, good to know, man. What's up, everybody? Kyle Kerrigan in the... Uh, in the chat here, Robert? This your brother? Hey, I like the picture of your dad here, old bastard. Hello, shout out to old bastard. Used to be able to shotgun beers. That was how I can do it. But chugging never could do. I guess I got a big mouth, Phil, because I, I don't struggle too much with either. The chug or the shotgun. You guys have seen me do the chug, which I... Uh, the chug's harder than the shotgun. It's significantly, at least for me. All right, Joaquin Buckley, 17 and 6. Vicente Luque, 22 and 9. Luque, minus 125 favorite. Luque, plus 105 on the dog money. And we'll keep you up to date with the live odds here. So, if, if you're a Buckley guy... 
Go to DraftKings. You get plus 124 right now. Luke is minus 148. Go somewhere else. And early odds for Aaron Blanchfield, Madame Farratt. As far as DraftKings, Aaron Blanchfield, a minus 192 favorite. Man and Farad, mind you, coming off a victory against Rose Yamahunes, plus 160 dog money. Just saying. Yes, it is, Billy. I love it. This is my little bro. Shout out. Shout out to the little bro. Shout out, Kyle. Good to see you, my man. Just started talking for the first time in our lives. That's crazy, man. Hey, little bro. Thanks for joining the Fights of Friends community. Yes. What's up, Kyle? I'm Seattle Mike, the uh, leader of the hooligans here. It's good to have you in the community. Welcome, brother. I'm going to ask you a stupid question, Robert, but is your brother against alcohol and marijuana? Just to, just, uh, just before he comes in the stream so I don't go too heavy on that. <laughs> Man, yeah, I really like this fight, but as I said, the, the, part of me really loves this fight. Part of me is like, this fight scares the shit out of me. Um, who had the last donation? Anybody remember who had the last donation? The, there was only one donation on the mobile stream. And I don't remember if it was more from IROC or who it was from, but I just want to make sure that they get credit here. Because uh, I know somebody had another $5 donation or up to 26 bucks on the night, which is why I'm two edibles and three drinks. And here's my fourth alcoholic beverage of the night. Yeah, I got a leaking floor. We need to, we need to get it done. I seen that Wyatt asking, does Rob really drink 20 Natty Isis a day? <laughs> I got the I got the energy drink, guys. Just so uh, so the uh, the edibles and the alcohol don't put me to sleep. I rock for two bucks. Thank you, thank you. It's two bucks. Okay, thank you, Billy. I thought it might have been I rock again. So seventeen bucks on the night from I rock. What was it? We were at 2064. I think we're at 28 now. Nice. And 17 from IROC. All right. Thank you, everybody who donated tonight for our second official post fight stream and first 420 post fight stream. Vicente Luque, three years older at 32, one inch taller at 5'11. Buckley will have a half inch reach advantage at 76 inches. So, major stat for me in this fight, uh, well, two big things. Vicente Luque, much, much better mixed martial artist, like much more rounded. But, he's fighting middleweight tonight, not welterweight. And after that brain aneurysm, I really worry about him. Out of the blue corner, he has a plus 105 underdog out of St. Louis, Missouri. 17 wins against six losses. Walking Buckley. 44, and he's in his 20s. He knows putting, uh, being drunk and high on weed, he's okay with it. He's proud I'm not on hardcore drugs anymore, so he seems happy. Nice. Yo, Daniel Bear, Andrew drinks my also thin out your blood, get you intoxicated faster. Hey. Cheers. And out of the red corner, he is a minus 125 favorite. Out of Brasilia, Brazil, Facete Luque. 
And Vicente Lucas, since the first time I've seen this dude fight, he's been one of my favorite fighters. And I'll tell you, the first time I've seen him fight was against Brian Barbarena. Anybody who hasn't seen that fight, I know I've thrown it out there a few times now. But go and watch Vicente Luque versus Brian Barbarena. I fell in love with both of those guys after that fight. Unfortunately, for those that don't know, after his last fight last week, Brian Barbarena no longer in the UFC. So I don't know if that was the end of his contract or if he was cut. Oh, I don't know what's going on with the uh, timer here, guys. Well. All right, so there's something going on with the timer. I don't know what... I don't know what the hell that is. If something happened when my power went out or what. What's up, David Stout? In the house. All right, 420 left here in the first round. Joaquin Buckley, Vicente Luque. Yeah, there's something, something's wrong with the timer. I don't have any idea. I don't think I can fix that until I stop the, the stream. Thank you, Driggs. I don't know about weed. That's why Four Locos are so fun. What's up, Fights Friends family? Late to the party, but I'm here. Four Locos has been illegal in Washington for a long time. Oh, nice one, too, there from Buckley. What's up, Damon? Daniel, I feel like this should have been main event. The woman's fight, the co -main. I think most of us feel that way. Oh, big... Left hand, right hook behind it, and a big left hook there for Buckley. There's another big right hook for Buckley. Yeah, I, man, I hope Luke takes these shots well. For those that don't know, he recently had a real bad, like a brain aneurysm after a fight. And it came back, had an impressive win against RDA. Good body kick there from Luke. Good combination with the hands for Buckley, who is... He is just a hundred percent headhunter right now. Good low leg kick there from Vicente. Oh, nice counter right there from Buckley. And Buckley, I, I, he, you know, he may be just a little bit more on tonight, a little more accurate, a little faster. Let's talk about one other thing from Luke, though. I mean, moving up 15 pounds, like when you gain that much weight, everything can change a little bit. Like all your timing, your speed, your power. Nice counter right there from Luke and good defense on the other side. Left hook gets through for Buckley. 220 left in the first round. I'd like to see Luke start going to the body, though. Buckley's hand, there's a good body kick there from Luke. Low leg kick lands for Buckley. Outside, now inside, two minutes left in the first. 56, 55, 54, 53, 152 left in the first round. I don't think we're going to be able to get the timer back up for this one, though, guys. Something, something weird happened with the timer. It asked me if I wanted to open this in safety mode after the power went off and I put yes and apparently that disabled my timer and maybe there's a few other things that aren't quite working correctly yeah every time I try the timer it just says round over good inside leg kick there from Luke back and up right hand of the body from Luke Buckley was landing big with the hands early Luke second half of the round has been coming on how can you not how can you not land that inside leg kick on Buckley too? Look how wide he, his stance is. And that front leg, like he's asking to be kicked in that front leg. He's begging for it. Just tee off on there it is. See, as soon as I said that, he teed off, knocked him down with the leg kick. Buckley went up for the head kick, and Luke just hits that front leg, knocks him down. But let's see if Buckley adjusts. It's hard to adjust a, a habit like that on the fly. Good inside leg kick there from Buckley. He does seem to have tightened his stance up a bit after that, though. Am 
Mike. I don't see my bro in here. Was he in chat? Isn't showing on my end. No, I just seen him um, in the Facebook chat. That was popping up at the top of my screen because I get notifications. Good left hook there from Luke. I wasn't sure if he was watching in here or not. And Luke going for the takedown. Buckley was doing a great job of fighting this. Man, he is fighting this with everything. And there's the round. Um, close round. I want to say 10-9 Joaquin Buckley because I thought he was stronger at the, at the beginning of the round. I don't know if you guys agree. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, no fight clock for the last two fights. Because since my power went out, I started my OBS in safe mode. And apparently when you do that, you no longer have the ability to... Um, sorry. Uh, to use the clock. So... Always go with the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So I think you probably live to be at least 110 years old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he might, man. He, he might, Bob. I do like that saying. It's not always true, for damn sure. There's a lot of things that hurt you that don't kill you that are very bad for you, but... All right, round two, Joaquin Buckley, Vicente Luque. Good sidekick to the body from Buckley to start out the second round. Double jab there from Buckley. Head kick from Luque. Right hook lands for Buckley. Oh, both guys swinging wildly. Buckley landing a good right hook to the body. Oh, flying, sloppy flying knee attempt from Buckley goes nowhere. Four twenty left in the second. Four eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, four fifteen. If you're looking to sync up with us, good little leg kick there from Luke. Oh, good jab and the right uppercut behind it lands for Buckley. Oh, and there's another good jab and right hook. He has landed some powerful shots now. Four minutes left in the second. 355, 54, 53, 52, 51, 350 left in the second round. Oh, and I forgot to end that poll. But you guys picked Luke. 12 votes. You guys obviously picked Luke. Luke too hesitant for good reason. Agreed, Wyatt. Good inside leg kick there from Buckley. Amen, Bob. I feel uh, hit his plans for me. Keep me around for some reason. I can't explain yet. God. Uh, I like Buck. I like when Buckley throws that side kick to the body. Oh, nice left hook upstairs from Luke. Luke's, Luke's slinging some frigging leather right now. Good counter left there from Luke. But Buckley's throwing these shots with everything. I mean, everything he's got right now. Good right hand there from Luke. I really want to see Luke go to the body more. He's really, and he drops levels there, goes for the takedown, pulls Buckley on top of him. Buckley's got some decent ground and pound. I don't know if that's going to end up being the best idea for Luke. I know he's very confident in his submission skills. Oh, he just ate two big right hands. There's another right and left to the head from Buckley. Big body shot there from Buckley, too. Buckley can unload from the top. With the ground and pound. He's doing it right now. Right hand, two left hands right after. Luke in a lot of trouble right now. Eats another right hook and a left hand. He's not even able to grab for any submission attempts here because he's got he's got fists flying in him so fast. Oh, big hammer fist right on the ear that yeah, you might need to stop this. And Keith Peterson puts an end to this one. 
Joaquin Buckley with the victory. And that puts us at 6-3, and three, guys. The Fights with Friends family did not call this one. It was a hard one to call because you didn't know how Luke was going to be coming into this one. But Buckley puts him away. Buckley hunted the head with almost every shot in this fight. It, it, it's hard to follow them, though. At the end of the day, I mean, I know the guy had a brain aneurysm, but this is fighting. You got to do what you can't not punch to the head because the guy had a brain aneurysm. It's not Joaquin Buckley's fault. He's fighting in there literally for a guy trying to take half his friggin' money. Man, yeah, they, I, I wouldn't like to not see Joaquin. Much as I love Cinti Luca over the top years, I would love to see him not fight again. Cheers, Eddie Alvarez in the house. Look alive as a card game. You have to play the hand God dealt you best you can. Never fold. Yep. Eddie, cheers, my man. Could be, Rob. Could be. I don't know what to think. Half the time, life's a trip. Life's a trip, and then you die. Look, he just, like, forget how to fight, or was he on the sauce? No, he had a brain aneurysm, I rock. Um, what would you say it is, Wyatt? A, a year and a half ago? Two years ago? He took a pretty good amount of time out, but in my opinion, he shouldn't be fighting. You're right, Robert. Life is a card game. It's all mental challenge. Mind over matter. I like Buckley, but I thought Luke would take him out. Me too, man. Uh, seems slightly early, but Luke needs to retire. How are you supposed to overcome that mentally? Time to move on, unfortunately. this uh, I don't believe this one went over two and a half, man. Not positive though. Does anybody know? I I'm did it, I did it even make it to the second round? It made it to the second round, right? Cheers, Chad Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez. Yes, Travis Vicente lost man. What a performance from Buckley. What's up, Torin? Yep, no. PR went around and a half. Oh yeah, of course it didn't go two and a half. It didn't make it to the third round. All right, 20 up in the chat. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you share this stream. Main event coming up next. And we got to go six and three, guys. So we are at six and three now. Um, I did not put down the Chris Weidman fight yet because I just, I got to wait for the review on that. I don't feel right giving us a loss on that. I feel like that way, I, I don't think they should give a, a loss to his opponent either. And on my tombstone, it stands for what a long trip I had. Ah, what's next for Buckley? He's a middleweight. Uh, Mar Martin Vittori. Martin Vittori, Joaquin Buckley. That's that's what I would put next. So, Buck, I still think Buck was pretty one-dimensional, but I do feel like he's been working on other parts of his games, too. He, he wasn't totally lost on the top, on the ground. Uh, that wasn't the second. That was the second round, yeah. But to get two and a half, you have to get into the third round. You have to go through two rounds and then get halfway through the third. Why well, try and fight scared with a style that you can't fight timid with? Buckley's 170, Mike. You high, bro? Yes, I am. I thought these guys fought at 185 tonight. Obviously, it's up there, so 
Dude, walk in. You gotta have a name. Dude, you have the name of the sponsor and you don't have the name of the person you want to fight. You have to have a name ready. If you win, if you lose, have an opponent in mind. There is no reason for you to show up at the post-fight interview if you don't know who you want to fight next. If you don't know who you want to fight next, if you can't tell them, they're not going to tell you. There's no reason for you to even come out for this fight if you don't know who you're going to fight afterwards. Like, it's the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes that fighters make. It drives me nuts. The mic is in your hand. You get to talk to Dana White. This is free press. The fans, everybody is listening after you just want to fight. And who do you want to fight? Oh, um, uh, well, wh whoever wants it, whoever's ranked. No, you need to call someone out, and it needs to sound like you hate this person's guts. Like, that's the game. So frustrating. 317, second... Uh, of second round is one fight was stopped. Thank you, Billy. When mine Buckley versus Chaos Williams. Ah, that's that's a good fight, Torrent. I think that's a pretty good matching. Yes, yeah, why most of us are that they fought before Torrent. I don't know. Who hide? Not me. Can't prove nothing, officer. It smoked some Grim Reaper. It's a proper name for it. This stuff is potent. All right, let's get the last. Poll of the night up. Guys, I think I started this way too early. Man, uh, I'm going to keep going. Wyatt might have to carry a little weight on the mic, though. I don't know if Wyatt's still calling in for the post show. God, I hope you're calling in, Wyatt. I'm high as shit right now. Guys, I will be right back. I'm going to take a quick restroom break. Pull for the last fight. Is up. Special thanks to everybody watching tonight and uh, the super chats for tonight. The donations, super chats, cash apps, however you donated. Uh, yeah, I'm a little worried about my house right now. What's going on? Just spent $1,000 on a dishwasher today. Now, apparently, we got to replace flooring. We got electrical issues. I really want to keep doing this. So I really appreciate those donations and all the support. Thank you guys very much. I don't want to get paranoid on weed right now, but now I'm thinking a little bit about that. 
All right, man in it for Ott and Aaron Blanchfield. <clears throat> Hopefully we get to seven and three, guys. Let's see where the vote's at so far. Wow, 88% Blanchfield. Eight votes. Well... I'm picking Blanchfield, too. Both these women are very, very talented, though. Can't call in. I can't have my drunk stuttering self on YouTube tonight. Oh, well, thank you. Just just embarrass my drunk stuttering ass. You can't even talk for two minutes. Phil, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so when her main event gets the next title shot, well, at least there is that. Yeah, they, they did say this is a, an actual number one contenders match, which they don't usually do in the UFC. I'm going to take Blanchfield. Blanchfield. I like it. No, Blanchfield. That's better. Women's flyweight. Number one contender fight. I rock. Thank you. With another super chat. Two dollars says fix your dishwasher. Thank you, sir. You're awesome, I rock. I really appreciate you, man. Like always here. Always here in the chat, always donating, always around. Man, thank you. That's a good guy. Everybody give it a give a hand out for IROC. Hit that hit that like button on his super chat there. See how we can get that. On beer number 26, if I did the math right, you did not. No. Buckman should have called someone out. It's torn. Yep, 17 watching, only six likes. Hit that like, people. It's been at Bob. Thank you, Bob. I had to get another beer in me. Level out this. Sh Man, Mike, if I lived closer, I could do the electrical and floor and install the dishwasher. Dude, that would be nice. I, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. I don't think I'm looking at like 20 grand or anything. It says 11 likes on my end. Still hit that like, folks. Come on now. My dad was a jack of all trades. Taught me everything he knows. Good stuff. <laughs> Love you, Mike. Thank you, I rock. Love you too, brother. All right, man. Farrat making her way down to the cage. Used to be head maintenance man in a 52-unit townhouse complex. No one to build a house from scratch. Hey, we'll get over here, Robert. <laughs> we might buy you a plane ticket. <laughs> get over here and start fixing stuff. No, I'm just, I'm just teasing you, but. But yes, I, oh, I see 10 likes on mine. That's weird. I don't know how someone would see more likes than someone else. That's pretty strange. Now it says nine. Now it says ten. Oh, we got a couple. We got a couple dislikes in there somehow. Probably, probably those MMA whole fuckers in here. No. Phil D. Roll. My computer is effed up. She's probably up to date on the likes. Nice. My dad was a master carpenter, like Jesus. Maybe that's why he's still alive. <laughs> All right, man, and Farad on an 11 fight win streak, longest active win streak in the UFC's flyweight division, with six six wins by a by knockout, and somehow she's the underdog tonight. Is Aaron Blanchfield really that good, or is she untested? We're about to find out. You guys know I have been big on Aaron Blanchfield from the first couple times I've seen her fight. I, I've even called her the head, the, you know, the future of women's MMA. She can either prove me right tonight or make me look like a friggin' idiot. But she's coming down to the cage right now. Phil D. Roll. Oh, give me some Dawn and a sponge. I'll F up some dirty dishes. Cheers. Cheers, Phil. <laughs> All right.
man, guys. From Atlantic City, New Jersey, via Seattle, Washington. For the tens watching at home, fights with friends, family. Five rounds in the women's flyweight division. Let's fuck it go! The winner of this match is the number one contender and will get the next shot at the flyweight championship. Uh, of course, after the Alexa Grasso Valentina Shushenko fight, they will both coach on the Ultimate Fighter. That is in recording currently. Starts airing in June at the end of the Ultimate Fighter. They're supposed to fight each other. Then the winner of that will fight the winner of this match. Um, Aaron Blanchfield was asked on Ariel Hawani's MMA show, like, do you want to sit that entire time? Would you be open to fighting somebody else? He mentioned Rose Namahunes. She said, I like to say it, stay active. I would love to fight Rose Namahunes. Now, it does nothing for her. Uh, Madame Farad already beat Rose, so Aaron beats Madame Farad. It's, you know, really does nothing for her career. It's, it's nothing to lose, nothing to win and everything to lose. All right, longest active win streak in the UFC flyweight division, so they're tied with it at six. Nine fight win streak overall, tied for second most submissions in UFC flyweight history. Man, nine fight win streak, 11 fight win streak. Somebody's streak's got to go, but that's 20 wins combined without a loss. In the last 20 fights for these two women, zilch, zero losses. The women's flyweight division landscape changes significantly tonight. Had a dishwasher about four years ago, went crazy eventually, leaked all over, same situation. Pretty much, I pulled that out and got rid of it. Uh, Mike, fly me out, I'll be your personal handyman for a few weeks, I'm serious, cheap labor, get me stone drunk, place to stay, I am game. I'll talk to the wife, man. All right, Madame Farrat, 10 years older at 34, three inches taller at 5'7". Aaron Blanchfield with a one-inch reach advantage, 66 inches. Rob, you can't be doing electrical and carpentry, 30 beers. You'll end up with a Tam Allen tool time accident on your hands. <laughs> Says electrical is easy. Eric Cologne. Sal Diamato and Chris Lee, oh God help us, are the judges in this one. Vitor Roberio is the referee. Never heard of this guy, so we're off to a, a, a tremendous start already here. Two of the three crappiest judges in the game. The third one I don't recognize, and then a referee I barely recognize. Thank God we're not in the apex, right? <laughs> when I'm working, I don't get that drunk, Billy. No, you, yeah, you can't work on my electrical when you're that drunk, Robert. Sorry. <laughs> All right, round one. Aaron Blanchfield, Manon Farratt for the number one contendership. Out of the blue corner, she is a plus 155 underdog at a nice front. 11 wins against one loss. Presenting the number three ranked flyweight in the world, Mandan Farach. All right, and we will end the poll. 64% of you say Aaron Blanchfield. I am very intrigued as to how this fight's going to go down. I mean, very intrigued. Pretty good with sheetrock. Electrical, though? Nope, but I don't even try. All right, out of the red corner, a minus 185 favorite out of Elmwood Park, New Jersey. 
12 and 1 overall, 4 and 0 is a UFC favorite, presenting the number two ranked women flyweight contender in the world, Aaron Blanchfield. And see, Aaron's already the number two ranked contender in the world. Look at all the Blanchfield shirts, all the men with the Blanchfield shirts. The Blanchfield family? Or is those just some hardcore Aaron Blanchfield fans? All right, here we go. You know, every team in, like, the NFL, the NBA, like, they have a bunch of hardcore fans. I mean, Major League Baseball, Mar I'm wearing a Mariners hat. You don't see a lot of people wearing, like, Aaron Blanchfield hats or Man and Farad. It's... It's all about the UFC for the most part. All right, here we go. Round one. Farrat with the blue tape and the white trunks. Uh, Blanchfield with the blue trunks and the, or excuse me, uh, yeah, white trunks for Farrat, blue trunks for Blanchfield. Good combination there for Farrat and a nice right hook on the ear from Farrat. Now, Farad's got some incredible kickboxing. Good body kick there from Blanchfield. I expect Farad to have the advantage on the feet. I expect Aaron to have a significant advantage in the wrestling. Good left hand there from Farad. And Farad's got such a herky-jerky style. Like, she can throw punches like this back and up. And, I mean, it's uh, It's wild. Good little straight right on the chin there from Farad. Four minutes left in the first. Oh, good body kick from Farad. There's a good right hook from Manon Farad. And she, oh, and it's Manon picks Blanchfield up and throws her down. What a start to this. Who would have expected this? Nobody. Blanchfield working on a guillotine here, though. This is pretty deep. She's still got it from standing. Like, Manon is not out of this. This might, this might be it. She's really cringing. She's not out of this. She's not unconscious yet. She just shook her head no. Blanchfield could burn her arm out here, too. Farad is still conscious. This, this is still a deep guillotine with a pretty good amount of leverage here. And Farad, oh, my, oh, and she's finally out. She is out of it, though. After that, and Aaron Blanchfield coming in. We'll see if she can't get an easy takedown. Oh, and there's a short elbow lands for Blanchfield on the break. But Farad stops the takedown. Good right hand for Madame Farad. So far, great first round for Manon out, you know, despite almost being choked out by that guillotine. Oh, beautiful left hand packing up for Manon Farad. And she ducks under Blanchfield's shots. I do not believe Blanchfield is anywhere near on the level of Farad striking. I'm not sure she know I'm not so sure she knows that though. Good left hand there from Farad. Blanchfield cannot pull a Ronda Rousey here. And what I mean by that is go in there and start striking when you're the grappler. Good left hand there from Blanchfield. I mean, I'm not saying this is Rousey versus Nunez-like or even Holmes-like, but Manon's a better striker. Good right hand backing up from Manon Farratt. Man, and a very good, legit striker, Aaron Blanchfield, a passable striking to get to her grappling. Good left hook there from Blanchfield. There's a left hand on the chin from Blanchfield. Straight right lands for Manon. And Blanchfield's got the body lock, lands a good knee to the body. Not able to get Farrat down, though. Good straight right there from Farrat. Farrat with the only takedown so far in this fight. Oh, good side kick to the body and a straight right there for Manon Farrat. I don't know what the odds were 
for who got the first takedown, if that prop was available where you're at. But I'll tell you, the odds had to have been largely in favor of Blanchfield getting the first takedown. Like, you might have gotten 20 to 1. A good right hook back and up for Madame Farratt. Oh, Blanchfield, three-punch combination there. She's got Manon up against the fence. And Manon reverses her. Manon may be the stronger fighter here. I believe that I believe she is. And Aaron reverses her back up against the fence here. Aaron has superior technique in the grappling, or at least I, I thought that coming into this. Good knee to the body. From Manon, Blanchfield answers with one of her own. That's a big right hook to the eye, though, from Farad. And look at the mouse on the left eye of Aaron Blanchfield. 10-9, Madam Farad. Take your word for it, because I don't really know S about it. I'm too clumsy to do that stuff. I'm good at bulwark stuff. Too much. Thinking messes me up. Robert, let's make some hydropower. I've got 40, 50 feet ahead. What do you think? Aha. That man in takedown was impressive. It was, man. I mean, that, that was legit. Over 10 gallons a second, easy, probably more. Damn. It's the most under the influence chat I've ever seen. <laughs> That's saying a lot for this chat. All right, good left hand backing up from Madame Farrat. Well, tomorrow's Easter, dude. You know Easter is like a big drinking holiday. In the United States, right? Nobody talks about it, but I know because I worked in grocery. Like, we would sell so much beer and wine the day before Easter, more than any day in the entire year. Americans love to get drunk on Easter. Four twenty left in the second. And Blanchfield with the body lock gets the sweep. Little nice Ochi Gar in the inside. And Madame Farrat reverses her. Ends up back on top and back to her feet. You can tell Madame Farrat did her homework before this match. I mean, this is definitely the best grappling we've ever seen from her. We expected her to get significantly out grappled by Blanchfield. Good left hand there for Blanchfield. Blanchfield with the body lock. Let's see who gets this. Oh, good knee to the body there from Blanchfield. If Blanchfield could take her left foot in the inside of in between Farad's waist there and flip her hip up, she could have landed an Agoshi there, uh, which is a hip throw. One of the big ones that uh, wasn't one of Rhonda's favorites back in the day. Only when a current crosses from hand to hand, you die because it stops the heart. Oh, Jesus. Cheers. Why? Cheers, I rock. Mike, it's illegal to sell alcohol in grocery stores in Canada. Different world, eh? Really? That is definitely a different world. Nice counter right hook from Man and Farah backing up. I definitely gave Farad the first round. Oh, good straight right there from Farad. Sidekick to the body from Farad. Oh, there's a good right hand from Blanchfield. Straight right lands for Farad. Blanchfield continues to move forward. Lands a good body kick there. Manage just went backing up and picking her off all night, though. There's a good left hand on the chin there from Blanchfield. 
and a low leg kick. A lot of times Blanchfield will land something that looks like it's such a good strike, such a good punch, but she doesn't really have like that knockout power, but her precision is there. Like her, technically, she's so good. Good straight right there from Farad. Oh, nice right hook there from Blanchfield. But she lands shots sometimes. It's like you expect that she would hurt Farad because of the angle and the, what strike it is. But she, she just doesn't have that drop you power. She may develop it as she gets older. Good body kick there from Blanchfield. Oh, Farad answers with one of her own. 110 left in the second. There's a good straight right from Farad. Oh, nice right hook from Manon. They exchange rights. Twenty to eighteen Farad in favor of significant strikes this round. Good side kick to the body from Farad and a nice right hook backing up. There's the left hand. Madam Farad looks like she's on her way to going up two rounds to zero. Good right hook there from Blanchfield. This is a very close round, though. I mean, a dominant last 25 seconds for Blanchfield could pull this out. Good inside leg kick there from Aaron. Body lock. Nobody gets a takedown, though. 15 seconds left in the round. Sidekick to the body from Farat. All right, through two. I have a 2018 uh, man and Farat. And Blanchfield, it's not like, especially like that last round, it's not like she lost them by a lot, but she did just enough to lose. Uh, Monday off can confirmed. I'm stocked up for the weekend. Nice. Maybe not fine. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. On top of the drugs and head trauma. Uh, uh. Why does she yell like an animated Dragon Ball Z character? Uh, Manon or Aaron? I don't have audio on this one. That's crazy that it's illegal to sell alcohol in grocery stores in Canada, though. Yeah. You can't buy weed in grocery stores here, though. I will say that. And until not that long ago, most states you couldn't buy hard liquor, only beer. Good left hook there from Blanchfield to start the third. I gave Aaron, Man and Farad the first two rounds. Good straight right there from Blanchfield. Sidekick to the body from Farad. Four thirty left in the third. Twenty eight, twenty seven, twenty six, twenty five, twenty four, twenty three, twenty two, twenty one, four twenty left in the fight. Or left in the third round. Sorry, five-round fight. Good right hand there from Blanchfield. Oh, look at that. Farad just throwing her off like a rag doll when Aaron came in to try to get that takedown. There's a significant strength difference from these two women. And there's a good one, too, from Manon. I'm interested to know what the odds are. Now, they have to be significantly in the favor of Madam Farad. Uh, she she's just bullying her tonight. She's just bullying Aaron Blanchfield. I don't know how many people expected this, but uh, yeah, Mana Farad minus four twenty five favorite right now. Aaron Blanchfield plus well, Aaron Blanchfield just went to a plus five hundred underdog minus eight ten favorite for Mana Farad. That is that's crazy. Oh, good left hook and a right hand. From Manon, big body kick from Blanchfield. 
Good right hand from Farad. Oh, left hook right on the on the temple there for Blanchfield. Needed the body from Aaron. Odds went back down. I don't know what happened there, but now it's plus 300. Blanchfield minus 425. Man of Farad. Good right hook there for Manon. Oh, Blanchfield inside. She, she tell she was going for a judo sweep there, but Manon just threw her to the side. She, she's just bowling her. This is like, like a mother fighting her child right now. Like, and Blanchfield is looking like the child. Good straight right from Farad backing up. Oh, nice counter right hook from Manon. Aaron's got to get this to the ground. She has to get it to the ground. She has to work her submission games. She's not going to win the stand-up game with Manon. Left hand there. Lance for Blanchfield. Right hand on, on the chin for Farrat. Oh, good counter right hook there for Manon. And there's a 1-2 from Blanchfield. Oh, man. Frock cut her up with that. Back to plus 500 on Blanchfeld. And I wouldn't even take it right now. Blanchfeld's just getting her ass handed to her. Good straight right there from Frock. Outside leg kick from Blanchfeld. And then the oblique kick. Straight right hand lands for Frock. <clears throat> Blanchfeld's having some success with those oblique kicks. Lands a counter left there. There's another body kick from Blanchfield. She's into Manon's striking range, though. Now she's got to be careful. Oh, good right hook on the break there for Blanchfield. She seems to be uh, figuring out the timing better on Manon here. Good side kick to the body from Farad. It's straight right from Blanchfield. Like, I don't know that Blanchfield is going to win this fight, but I feel like she's definitely learning right now. Like, she's downloading what Farad's been doing, and she's definitely figuring out her tendencies. Well, she blocked that head kick and then eats the one-two from Madame Farad. <laughs> oh, good. Straight right upstairs. Left hand to the belly from Farad. Right hand lands for Aaron. 20 seconds left in the third, and we're about 20 seconds away from Aaron Blanchfield going down three rounds to zero. Good knee to the body from Farrat. <laughs> oh, good jab and a powerful right hook backing up from Farrat. Farrat might be able to knock Aaron out in the later rounds, to be honest. Like, this is... Uh, this is just a drubbing. All right, guys, I got to take a quick restroom break before the, the next round starts. But I will be right back. <clears throat> Four, four, forty-five, forty-four, forty-three, forty-two, forty-one, four, forty left in round four. I 
have it 30, 27, man and Farrat through three. And pretty much see Canada from my house, Phil. I don't get some of the laws there. Friggin' ridiculous. Phil, what part of Canada can you see? Tired of women's main events? Boo! Boo the UFC matchmakers. Boo! Montreal is less than 80 miles north of me. Oh, good left hook and a right hand there from Aaron Blanchfield. Oh, nice! Power, power shot there from Blanchfield. There's another left hand and a big right elbow. Good left hook from Blanchfield. Her best work of the fight. And there's, there's a nice left hook from Aaron. Oh, good counter left from Aaron Blanchfield. And finally a right hook there from Farah Blanchfield having a great fourth round here. Sidekick to the body lands from Farad. Like I said, I think Blanchfield is really figuring out the rhythm uh, of Madame Farad, and she lands a 1-2 there. I think it might be too late for this match, though, but if they rematch, I, I, I think Blanchfield learned a lot in this fight. Good straight right there from Blanchfield. Drops down for the takedown. Can't get it. Outside leg kick lands for Blanchfield, and they exchange left hands. Farad on the inside going for the takedown. Almost gets another slam. Blanchfield able to step over and stop the takedown. Farad, oh, there's a head kick from Blanchfield. Farad just started on fire tonight, and Blanchfield had a very late start. I, I mean, I don't know if that was anxiety I don't know if Farad is just that much better at the beginning of the fight. Good left hand there from Blanchfeld. But it's starting to seem like a different fight here in the fourth. There's a couple of good left hands from Blanchfeld. Good one-two from Farad halfway through the fourth. 220, 19, 18, 17, 16, 215 left in the fourth. That is a personal best for significant strikes for Farah, and we still got over two minutes left to go in the fourth. Good inside leg kick there from Blanchfeld. I still feel like Blanchfeld's outstriking her this round, though, as they exchange right hands. Now, there's still almost two minutes left of this round to go, though. Oh, good left hand there from Blanchfeld. I think as we get into this later, maybe into this round, beginning of the fifth round, I think as Blanchfield starts to land more strikes, she's going to be able to start stringing the takedowns together just not as quickly as I thought it was going to come in this fight. Good left hook there from Blanchfeld. And a good straight right from Manon. There's the body kick from Aaron. Good right hook from Farad. I don't think too many people are surprised that Farad has outstruck Aaron tonight. I, I am absolutely mystified that Farad has outgrappled Blanchfeld tonight, though. Good sidekick to the body from Blanchfeld. Like, I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> it's like if Francis Ngannou... Instead of having that wrestling, you know, out wrestling Cyril gone, it'd be like him come almost like him coming in and out wrestling like a Daniel Cormier. A couple of good low leg kicks there from Blanchfeld. <clears throat> oh, big left hook there from Farad. Oblique kick lands for Blanchfeld. Farad goes up for the head kick, blocked by Blanchfeld. That was a hard head kick. That. That might have hurt the forearm of Blanchfeld. And Farad going for the takedown again. Blanchfeld able to stop it. Lands the right elbow. Exciting round from both women here. Four, three, two, one. That's the end of the fourth. Fifth and final coming up. See the lights of Burlington, Vermont, though, from my front deck. I'm in New York. Mike's got to be closer than 80 miles. 
You in Vermont, Phil, or New York? Yeah, you're. I'm closer than 80 miles to you, I believe. Where are the eye pokes? I'm losing my SD eye pokes. This is boring. All right. Rob, you're a strange brew of human. That's why we love you. Did you finally see that movie, Strange Brew? Wyatt? I have Strange Brew on DVD. I didn't see it until a few years ago. My wife had me get it. I only watched it once. I can't remember it. Rick Moranis, that's all I remember. And beers. Cheers and beers. No fears. Beers are here's. All right, and round five, here we go. I'll count a right hand from Farrat to start the fifth. And there's a straight right, right on the chin. Good left hand from Manon. Oh, head kick lands for Blanchfield. That was, that was shin to temple. Blanchfield might not have the best power, but that accuracy, shin to head, like, that's, that's not good. Good little leg kick there from Blanchfield. Counter right hook from Farrat. Who won round four? Looking at the chat too much. I, I gave round four to Blanchfield. I gave the first three to Farrat. Yeah, I think it's 39-37. Uh, I, I think Blanchfield needs a finish. Good left hand there from Aaron. Good right hook from Farrat. Oh, and Farrat take, knocks her down with that leg kick there. They kind of slapped shins, and Blanchfield went down for a moment. Low leg kick there from Blanchfield. Left hand gets through for Aaron. Good straight right there from Farad. Body kick from Blanchfield. And just the harder strikes come from Farad too. That's why I would give her, you know, I would give her strikes more credit on the scorecards than I would Aaron's. There's a right hook from Manon. Good right hook to the body there from Farad. Left hand upstairs from Farad. And there's a counter right hook from her. Blanchfield getting shut out here in the last minute or so. Oh, and there's a good jab and a right hook from Farad. And almost makes you wonder if Farad kind of took part of the fourth round off. There's another great right from Farad because she just went right back to dominating like she did the first three rounds. Good body kick from Blanchfield. Right hand lands for Farad. Oh, and there's a good right hook from Manon. Oh, good side kick to the body from Manon Farad. And the one two upstairs. Yeah, this is just a drubbing right now from Manon Farad. Like, you can get 15 to 1 money on Aaron Blanchfield right now, and I wouldn't even think about it. Good right hook there from Manon. Oh, powerful right hook upstairs from Farad. 150 left in the fifth. Oh, there's a good left hook from Blanchfield. 1-2 lands for Manon. And there's a right hook from Blanchfield upstairs. Left hook, right hand behind it for Blanchfield. I I got to tell you, I underestimated Madame Farad tonight. I thought Blanchfield was a better fighter, and she's just beating Blanchfield up tonight. Good right hook there from Farad. Nice one, two from Farad. Snaps Blanchfield's head back. And Aaron Blanchfield just broke her significant strike best as well. So both women passing their significant strike best in this fight. Um, it kind of makes sense though because they're fighting five rounds instead of three. And 
Blanchfield working on trying to get one last takedown before this fight's over. I mean, I don't even think she can win this round with a takedown, much less this fight. Good counter right there from Aaron. 30 seconds left in the fight. Sidekick to the body from Farrat. And there's a nice right hook from Madden. 1 2 Blanchfield, 20 seconds left in the fifth. About why it picked Man of Farrat by decision, too, didn't you? I looked at that, and I think it was like 8 to 1 or better. Oh, nice right hook. Oh, both women exchange right hooks there. Man and pushing Blanchfield back again. There is the bell. And yeah, that's. I, I got it four rounds to one, man, of Farad. Like, not close. Mike, I'll definitely be calling in, but I need you to lead the conversation. Uh, can I call your bro, little Rob? Sarah, I guess your questions, and I'll try to think of something to ask you. All right. No, I mean, like, you're big Rob, and he's a little Rob. Uh, All right, guys, I think we're, we know where this is going. Uh, Wyatt, if you want to call in on Messenger, let's do this. Let's have Wyatt kind of call in um, if you're able. And uh, we will take calls from you guys. You can ask questions to me and Wyatt. Other than that, we'll just run like a podcast and we'll run a post show with each other and then you guys can call in and uh, talk about what you feel. Yes, Kyle. Thank you, of course. Um, I picked Man in Decision. I saw Man in Grapple fuck me, uh, Maya and I knew the only concern was Man in Gassing. They are Kyle. Why not that close? We are Kyle. Oh. Yeah, it's just a drubbing. Do we have a translator in the building, please? <laughs> oh, there we go, Derek. Manon, congratulations. A very dominant performance, 50-45, over a woman that has just ran through everybody. Give me your thoughts on the fight. All right, let us know if there's anything you guys want me and Wyatt to talk about. And that's seven in a row for Man and Farad. All right, Wyatt said uh, about five to ten minutes. He's going to go grab some food. But uh, before that, let's put up the number for call-ins. Four two five seven nine one eight seven three zero is the number. Let's go, Wyatt. Talk about the Nate fight, please. Our Nate Diaz versus Nate Landwehr. Oh, I like that fight. You know, that's probably not a bad fight. They're they'd be at the same weight now, or is Diaz heavier? I gotta think. They could be at the same way. Yeah, I like that fight. Go 
going to be hungover tomorrow, but that's all right. It was worth it. You and me both, Phil D. I think, I think I'm already half hungover. Fire your coaches, Aaron. They gave you trash advice. 100% agree, Billy. All right, so we move to 6-4 and four as a team. Uh, the Chris Weidman decision pending, so we might be 6-5. and five. We're doing so good, guys. It's, it's a tough couple of weeks to pick. <clears throat> Still well above 500, though. Oops. Yeah, I like Nate Diaz versus La Nate Landwar, though. That's a good one. Uh, PFL finally opening up next week, too. PFL starting their regular season. Um, oh, hey. Rob in the house. What's up, Rob? Robert Kerrigan. What's up, my man? I can't hear. Oh. Can you hear me? Now, now I can, can hear you. Hear All right. Sorry about that. No worries. I pushed the wrong button and it fucking muted you somehow. Ah, uh, what's up, man? Not much, man. My little bro is, I guess, listening to us right now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Shout out to yeah, Kyle. Cool. Oh, there yeah. he is. Yep, I see him in chat. Says, what, what's up? It's Rob's brother. Appreciate the love. I'll be here for the stream for a bit. Nice. Hey, thank you, Kyle. Right, Appreciate it. That's so cool. Man, glad to see you in here, Kyle. Yeah, you guys know how much a trip this is, man. We haven't talked since he was like 12. I haven't seen him since he was like 12. Oh. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Long, I'm happy for you, man. And we're gonna meet him and my brother to start doing like weekly uh, chats and stuff, uh, like uh, like a three way call. Yeah, me and nice. me him, older brother. Oh, that's awesome. So our, our older brother's in Florida. Ah. He's the one that works at Sea World, the supervisor Sea World. Oh yeah, you're telling me that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Sea World. Wow, I didn't notice that. Did you see all three of the judges had a 50-45 for Manon? Yeah, I seen that too. Um, I, I only gave Aaron one round, but I, I thought she won the fourth pretty convincingly. I thought Manon probably took the fourth round off. I don't know. I'm pretty high, though. So, <laughs> what, what, did yeah. you, what did you think? Oh, my brother just texted me asking me what, what, what's my name in YouTube. Tell him it's Drunken Charge. Oh, Drunken Charge. It was Robert Kerrigan, but we changed it because Mike gave me the name Drunken Charge. Yeah. Yeah, but he'll say Drunken Charge Robert Kerrigan though a lot. Yeah. Hey, Panhead Bob. Yeah. Hey, Panhead Bob Kyle is like our dad. He's like OG biker guy. He's our dad's age. He's a good. He's a good friend of Mars. Nice. Yeah, Pan is yeah, a good guy. I've chatted with him yeah, quite a bit too. He, might, he, he reminds me of my father, like yeah. the kind of guy he is, the biker nice. guy, just in the bikes and everything. Nice. Man, I don't. I don't know how you drink what and you want smoke to talk about? so much, man. <laughs> um. Well, like how you drink and phone. smoke so much. Like I had, I had freaking twenty milligrams of edibles I'm on my fourth drink, and I'm fucking wasted, man. <laughs> well, because I've been doing this shit since I was thirteen years old, Mike. You know, <laughs> but like also the hardcore drugs, they went away. So like I just kind of just kept on with the weed and the and the drinking. So like I don't know, I I gotta like substitute like one addiction for another. So like it's better being on alcohol and weed than heroin and meth, you know? So D.A.R.E. definitely didn't work for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, it didn't hey, work my, for my me. Next get... neighbor, my, next, my next neighbor that grew up next to our dad's house is uh, a kid named Sam Lopez. His dad, the one 
is the one that started the dare program really he's like he's one of the main founders <laughs> and i just came out of his house and shit and he's right next to our neighbors to me <laughs> dude that yeah. shit worked on me that scared the shit out of me as a kid nah i mean <laughs> I thought, man, because I, I, I knew I had an addictive personality, which I was right about that. I knew it's like a little kid, and I was like, and then they told me, like, man, you get addicted to, like, heroin or whatever it is. Like, the first time, I was like, fuck, I'm good. I'm like, I'm staying away from that. Well, that came later on in life after I had my accident, and also it was the, uh, the medical profession got me hooked on that. Like, they were pu pumping me with the bike ends and stuff since I was 15 years old. Oh, I've seen so, so I many people. Get addicted so like, that way. I'm literally that story that they talk about the whole op the the whole pill mill, the opioid epidemic. Yeah. The doctors of this company full of. That was one of them people, you know. Like that's that was not me, but before that I was way, I was doing meth and and acid and mushrooms in high school and doing all the crazy shit like nos nitrous oxide. You know, we're doing nos parties, getting six five gallon tanks. It was like five foot tanks. We're gonna yeah. filled up. Yeah, like yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy life, but yeah. I like I said, like my life has done a one eighty. I'm just even though I drink a lot, like it sounds like I'm crazy because I drink like twenty beers a day, but like that's chill compared to what I used to do. I used to drink like thirty, forty, fifty beers a day. You know, like <clears throat> and I used to do like drugs on top of that. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm cut back to alcohol and cut off the drugs. So, like, I'm doing way better in life. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's way better than all that other crap. <clears throat> and now with this medical stuff going on with me, like, that's the only thing that's keeping me sane. If I wasn't doing, like, the, the, the alcohol and the weed, like, I'd go crazy with this, this neuropathy thing and this pain I'm going through, man. I'd go crazy. Oh, yeah. I like, I don't know, I don't like know how much longer I'll be walking. It's like, it's, uh, like, it's getting that serious. Yeah, it's like the marijuana. It's like, yeah, I know some people can abuse it. People can abuse anything. But, like, the benefits so outweigh anything bad with marijuana. It's like... Yeah, and I don't look at it as abusing. I just, like, I get a high tolerance because I've been doing it for so long. It's like, dude, yeah, if you eat too much... You know, broccoli's good for you. If you eat too much of it... You freaking shit yourself. You eat too much of it, you could probably die of freaking gastrointestinal, uh, you know, some shit or whatever. That doesn't mean broccoli's bad for you. Like, we're talking about the edibles in the chat earlier. Like, yeah, like, it, back in the day, like, 30, 40 milligrams messed me up. But once I've been doing it for so many years, like, I ate a, a bag of a thousand, I don't know how many different times. So, like, if, once you do that many milligrams, you can handle it. Like, you can handle it. What's up, Greg Brimstone in the house? Is yeah, I used to do a thirty pack a day. Getting too old for that. Also, what's up, guys? Cheers, Greg Brimstone. Good to see you, my man. So yeah, hey, Greg, no, how's it going? Yeah, no, I never tried edibles. I was a wuss. Like I never tried edibles until I think it's about four years ago or something when. They first legalized them here, and me and the wife were going on vacation somewhere, and we decided to have them over the weekend. And we're like, "Oh yeah, this is this is pretty badass." <laughs> well, before I had elbows, like when medical marijuana first came legal in two thousand in California, um, in, in the dispensaries they had these things called uh, they're they're pills, THC pills. Yeah, it was just li literally liquid concentrated THC. It's basically what they put in the edible, but yeah. instead of putting the candy, they just put it in a capsule. And you yeah. swallow it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I remember taking two of those and they had these um soda pops that had teats in them. But they went they went there's so much teats in these soda pops, they wouldn't sell you more than two of them. So my <laughs> friend's dad bought two two of them, gave me one, and they gave me two pills. I went and got a haircut. And when this chick was like just shampooing my hair before she cut my hair, I was like freaking spacing out like an cloud nine i was like oh my god this is the best film and i was falling asleep in the hair when she cut my hair I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so are you okay sir i'm like yeah i'm just really comfortable oh, that's crazy. i was like 21 at the time because that's when we got legals back in 2000 i was 21 in 2000 oh hey yeah. greg i i, I kind of that kind of slipped my mind i've been so busy this week but yes i do want to do an interview with carl deaton um, yeah so yeah sent you a pm on twitter with this info okay i'll i'll get in contact with him great thank you man appreciate it 
Pan and Bob says, Robert, your tolerance is high. The alcohol doesn't phase you. It only makes you sober. That's my perception. Oh, well, I'm just a functioning alcoholic. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty messed up right now. I, I, actually, because of what's going on with my dad this week and everything, I'm, I've kind of been going overboard, like, 20, 25 beers a day. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep to 12 to 15 beers. Yeah. But, like, this week's been a little rough. Yeah. So I'm pretty, like, I'm probably, like, I'm probably, like, 30 beers right now, actually. I don't know. I lost count, like, a little while ago. Uh, well, yeah, st- stuff hits me quickly, though. I'll tell you, like, especially if I take okay. edibles, like, I took these, and then, like, if I have a beer or two afterwards, like, it ignites it. Like, I'll be high in 30 minutes, and I know people take edibles, and it takes them two to three hours to, for it to hit. Oh, no, it hits me in, like, 40 minutes when I take edibles. Really? Yeah. Oh, my wife's like two to three hours because she takes. Well, you put anything I do, pain. like whether it's mushrooms or anything I do, like within forty minutes it hits me pretty quick. Like, yeah. I feel the effects pretty quick, but yeah. I just got a high tolerance. I've been doing it, for, and also like I just ride it. Like I just know how. Like I did too much at one point, so I know what the too much too much feels like. So like, yeah. I I know like I'll be all right. <laughs> I remember one time I did acid when I was like 16 and I didn't know they were double dipped. Yeah. And I, and I took two hits, mm. which is double dipped. So that'd be four hits. And I was freaking <laughs> out, flying high. Where, where were you at when you did acid? Oh, uh, I was just, we were just going to different, like, we went to like a house party with some friends and the posters on the wall were moving. I was on the doctor, so I had them bring me home. And then my brother, my older brother at the time, he was. Uh, Stone High School. He was a senior at the time. I was like a uh, sophomore. He, you know, I was freaking out. I told him what's going on, and he didn't. He didn't do that kind of drug or nothing like that. But like, I said, just I need to fucking relax. So he put on the Lion King, <laughs> the cartoon, <laughs> and I just kind of just melted on the couch and just had a great night after that. Like he's got to change when you have a bad trip. You just got to change your set and setting. Just change your whole like mood and everything be all right. So I knew everything would be all right after that. But after that time I had that bad trip, I knew every time after that I'll be all right. When I had a bad trip, just you know I had to change my environment. Oh yeah, you know I was never like as a kid I was never really into that into like cartoons and different. You know, like kid oh, stuff. I was, when I was a kid, I was doing acid though, and much so like eight or nine. Cool. Well, no, once I started doing edibles, now I want to watch cartoons as an adult. Oh yeah, they're strip now. Oh, I love them. Dude, wacky hey, you ever heard of Fritz the Cat? You're old enough. You heard of Fritz the Cat, the cartoon, the movie? What is it? Fritz the Cat. I've heard of it. It is the the most racist and drug addict. Like everything, every stereotype you could possibly think of, it breaks. Like, it's a crazy-ass cartoon. It's got this crazy-ass drunken drug out of cat. Uh, the, the the pigs are cops in the movie. The the, the crows are black people. Or Puerto, uh, oh, the geez. Puerto Ricans are like wild boars. Hitler's like a pig. He's got a small penis. Like, Jeez. yeah, it goes all throughout this crazy shit. Like, it's a crazy trip. And it's got, like, crazy color colors in the background. Like, it's a movie to watch when you're on mushrooms or acid. And it's called Fritz the Cat. Fritz it's the it's cat. kind of hard okay. to find, though. You're not okay. going to find it on the internet. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. Yeah, I'm always looking for something. Hey, remember the cartoon back in the day, too, the Heavy Metal? That was another trippy-ass cartoon. Uh, yeah, you know, I never have actually watched It had, like, that. heavy metal music, and it was, like, all, like... It just it, had... it just came onto one of the streaming services I have. I can't remember which one it was. But I'd actually oh, it's really it. good. It's got, like, different scenes, like, um, different stories. It's got, like, five different stories... So it's not like one complete movie. Yeah. <clears throat> it's got like like almost like a creep show kind of thing where it's got different stories oh, in I love, it. I love creep show. Oh, that's another one. Yeah, I heard they're bringing out, uh, they're they're coming back with one. They're coming out with a new one. Because they came out with like, what, they had three or four already? Yeah. I heard they're redoing it again. Nice. <clears throat> oh, yeah, those are awesome. From the first, oh, yeah. from the first one on, like yeah. Movie thing too, cause there's so many movies coming out that... Is anyone else trying to call in? I don't want to keep up the time. Oh, wow. Uh, Wyatt was actually going to call in on Messenger. He was just saying when we were done. All right. Oh, I'm done when you guys are done. Okay. I don't know what right. to talk about. All I right. Just, hey, just hey, thanks call for calling in. in, Rob. I'm glad my brother's here. You know? Nice. 
All right. Well, hey, thanks for calling in. Prayers to your dad and your family, man. I'm really glad that you and your brother uh, are, are talking and having a good relationship now. It's awesome. Really happy for you guys. All right, man. All right. Night. See you later. I'll later. be in the chat. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Let's get Mr. Wyatt Matheson in here. Just a second here. Good day. Hey, how's it going? Well, I mean, I got a, a massive problem with Christopher Weidman, <laughs> but other than that, I'm good. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? You probably have to turn me up a fair bit because I can't be very loud right now. I'm having a hard time hearing you for some reason now. Can't hear me at all. Shit. Well, it does not help that I'm high today. True, true. Yeah, I can't hear you, though. I don't know why. Like, at all? Oh, shit. Um... Hey, let me try something here. Still there? I'm still here. Okay. I had headphones hooked into the speaker down there and I forgot. I rocked as he can hear me, so. Oh, okay. I, I can hear you now. It was on my end. Surprise, surprise. Hear me whispering. <laughs> yeah. No, I had uh, I, I had earbuds hooked into something down here and I didn't realize it. Or headphones. So, yeah, we're good now. Man, what a disappointing main event. That now I feel like I can't hear Mike. <laughs> you can't hear me now? Well, son of a... Yeah, Mike, if you're talking, I can't hear it all, man. Oh, you I just hear the sound of my own voice. Oh, my. Wow. Mike. Mike. Can you hear me now? Hello? Oh, you got to be kidding me. You can't hear me at all? Son of a... Can anybody right hear now, me? I don't know if anybody's listening to me or not, but right now I can hear my voice on stream. I can hear Mike's voice on stream, but I can't hear Mike's voice through the phone call, which means I'm talking to Mike that's like 30 seconds in the past. Oh, wow. Now why it is too loud? It's like he's in a tunnel. Oh, that's probably that's probably me having it up too loud. I'm sure. Cause you sound fine to me, but yeah, there's probably a little echo. Well, that's really not good. <laughs> Maybe this brilliant idea of having Mike do a bunch of edibles before hooking everything up wasn't the best idea. <laughs> maybe, are you saying maybe we should have done it after? Oh my. 
I'm so fucking baked right now, guys. I'm sorry. Rob, I don't even have the stream on. The stream's off. Holy shit. I just turned it on for like a second to see if I could hear myself or if I could hear Mike. So if it's echoing, it's 100% not me. <laughs> that, that was a really nice way of not blaming me, Wyatt. <laughs> Just saying, it's a hundred percent not me. It's okay, guys. No rush. We're all good. What's up, I Rock? <laughs> what the fuck is this guy doing? It work fine for me. What happened, Mike? Well, he's on Messenger, and you were on the phone. That's that's what the difference is. Should I try and call you back? I'm going to hang up and try to call you back. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me now? I, I can hear you loud and clear now. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, this this me being high as fuck when I can barely operate technology <laughs> as it is was you a did, great you, idea. You did the order completely wrong. You need to like get me or whoever else in here before starting. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. And that, now we know this. <laughs> okay, so can they hear us both now, or is it still all fucked up on the stream? Uh, let yeah, let us know, guys. Irox says four twenty stream. That that makes it sound like it's like absolutely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I I barely remember the Madden for Aaron Blanchfield fight, and I just watched it. No oh, shit. Well, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> guys, can you hear both of our voices right now? And we're going to have to wait 30 seconds now to see because of YouTube's fun business. Oh, Irox says, yes, we hear you. Robert says, yes, everything is fine. All right. All right. So we're good. Yeah, I mean, it worked fine last week. I just, I don't know what the deal was before. But <laughs> All right. Seems fine now. All right. Well, let's see if you can talk about the Man and Firo fight since you say you have absolutely no memory of it. That sounds interesting. Well, no, I did. I have some memory of it for sure. Um, Farad just, just beat her up tonight, though. I mean, she dominated. I, I thought Blanchfield. I did think Blanchfield win the fourth round, which I know you said you didn't pay a whole lot of attention to, but that was only because I thought Farad took the round off, and she was so dominant in every other round. Like, right. I, I, Aaron just looked like trash tonight. Yes, yeah, I don't really think so. I think that it was just a horrific matchup for her. Because as I kind of hinted at in the comments, I watched, and I don't know if any of you guys remember this fight, but uh, Man and Furo fought um, Jennifer Maya, who's a fairly grappling heavy attack for the most part. Yeah, I remember you talking about that one. And she just like, every time Maya attempted a takedown, Man would just like hip toss her and throw her on her head over and over and over again. So I was like, just the pure strength of her. There's yeah. going to be huge problems because she's going to be a lot bigger. If you look how she's built, I yeah. mean, you got to take into account in women's MMA, if you got no boobs and no ass, then yeah. you're a, a lot less weight to cut, right? So yeah. she's big as fuck for the weight class. And uh, I just thought she was going to be too strong to be taken down. And we saw in the first round how she just got was able to throw her. So. Oh, yeah. She's way stronger. Yeah, so... I mean, I wasn't totally surprised. The part that I was a little surprised with is I thought she would start to gas after round three, and that's when I thought it was going to be super interesting. Yeah. But she didn't, so it was boring as fuck. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I, I think she kind of took the foot off the gas. If she didn't take it off, she definitely 
took the foot off the gas in the fourth and that was probably just to make sure that she didn't gas yeah yeah well it worked out yeah yeah uh, billy says fight sucked aaron had a trash game plan and mana doesn't have a killer instinct tonight no way she earned a title shot in my opinion i mean isn't that all just obvious stuff though like, Man and Firo never has a killer instinct. She doesn't finish anybody. She decision yeah. wins against everybody. And Aaron Blanchfield has the same game plan against every single opponent she's ever had in her entire life. So, yeah. trash game plan, yeah, in this matchup, for sure. Yeah. But it's always going to be the same. Yeah. And Man and Firo doesn't really finish fights unless she's fighting tomato cans. At least that's yeah. what I've seen. Yeah, which is, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a strange thing. Well, I mean, in, in that entire division, though, we're basically in women's MMA. Who finishes fights? This is Valentina Shashenko and... Nunes. And, oh, he's and, yeah, Nama Nunes, who couldn't finish her last fight. I mean, she doesn't really finish fights, man. Yeah. You it's think Nama... It's just Shevchenko. She has Shevchenko, and then from the past, Nunes, and that's pretty much it. Well, and obviously the best... Uh, finisher in women's mma history is rousey so yeah it was rousey and cyborg but yeah i'm just saying if who's if who's active yeah that'll suck that's why the canadians have a chance <laughs> hey you're one canadian on the card kyle nelson man he got it yeah. done pulled through hell yeah yep he looked so much bigger too than uh bill algio like weight wise it looked like he had a solid 10 pounds on him and i know he's huge for 145 so not oh, shocking yeah. He was. I expected a lot out of him when he first came into the UFC, and because uh, I'd watched all his other fights. But I'm sure, I'm sure most of it was just he was one of the first guests I ever had. So I really looked back at everything he did. Anybody that makes it to the UFC, I guess, is a pretty damn good fighter. Wait, so you had him as a guest before he was in the UFC? Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Because when he first fought in the UFC. I think it was in Toronto. I'm pretty confident it was at the Toronto card that I went to. And I was living like 20 minutes away from him at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool that you knew him or know him. Yeah. Yes, we need to talk about this. Billy's most recent comment. Also, the refs were absolutely worthless. So many mistakes on the entire card. Hope UFC takes a... Do you, do you not do periods, Billy? There's no periods in the USA. It's just a one big mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. On the entire card, hope the UFC takes a look into the rest performance and lets upcoming athletic commissions. Wait, what? And let's, oh, upcoming athletic commissions, something they prefer to those refs left out. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, I mean, I, I got I got a bone to pick with Chris Weidman, man. I'm oh, fucking pissed, horrible. bro. From the start, from the fucking beginning, dude's fingers were way, way, like, way fucking out, just like John Jones. Just like yeah. all of John Jones' fights. That's how John Jones used to win fights. And then they changed the rules. Not really, but they enforced the rules completely differently because of John Jones. And now they just let this guy do whatever he wants the whole time. Because yeah. realistically, you know the ref's name. What was the ref's name again? Uh, Gary Copeland. Yeah, so this jacked little midget kept <laughs> having, like, what is he? what is he fucking doing? He didn't warn him once. The only warning was to both guys. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. And it, he, it just happened to be the one time that I, you know, that I seen um, Bruno land an eye poke. Well, and it also was like a thumb. Oh, and it wasn't even an eye poke, really. It was, yeah. it was more a clean punch than anything. Yeah, and then Weidman is post-fight interviews like, yeah, we both got eye poked a bunch. It is what it is. Nah, dude. Nah. Yeah. No, you no, can't that's, say that. That's total bullshit. No. <laughs> and then they called a knockout. <laughs> like, dude, what? The... And because remember Anthony Johnson, I forget who he was fighting, but Anthony Johnson fell to the ground in a similar fashion after a really bad eye poke, and they called it a knockout, which is horrible refing. I'm pretty sure it was Steve Mazzagatti. Uh, yeah, but... I can't remember who he was fighting, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. But they didn't have replays. They looked at the replay 15 times and decided it's a fucking Chris Weidman win. Yeah. Please explain how that's possible. Yeah, that's insane. Cause, and it's and they looked at a replay earlier, you know, because uh, what, what was the replay they had looked at earlier? It, like when they stopped the action? Yeah, well, it wasn't in that fight. It was one of the fights before that. Oh. 
Uh, I don't remember. I think they let the fight keep going. Okay, well, yeah, I I, I guess I don't remember either. Oh, right oh, now. the uh, the Dumas fight, Dumas versus the crazy named tall guy. Oh yeah, they when ended up won. changing that to a DQ, right? No, it was or a I knockout. mean a no contest. No, it was a knockout. I'm looking they at never the did webpage right now. No, neither one of them was oh overturned. Oh my god, that is so ridiculous. <laughs> wow. But yeah, like back to back horrible calls. Because I mean, if you want to call it a no contest, yeah, sp- specifically in the Dumas fight, okay, like that makes sense. If you don't want to call it a DQ, like all right, because he poked him in the eye once. He wasn't doing anything to show that he's a fucking eye poking legend beforehand. Yeah. But in the Weidman fight, we knew from literally five seconds in, this dude has both his fingers completely extended outwards with his arms outstretched. Oh yeah. And he did that the whole fucking fight. Well, and then he literally does a double eye poke to end the fight. He pokes him in one eye, pokes him in the other. Dude yeah. goes down to the ground holding his fucking eyes. Chris Weidman lands a couple of hammer fists and the ref stops the fight. I'm like, I mean, you were right, though, with the Kung Fu Panda moves. Like, to do the freaking ninja shit, to do the double eye poke, and then pretend you punch him at the end for the win, like, that is pretty sick. But fuck <laughs> you, Chris Weidman, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like some, uh, man, that's like some, some shit Paul Daly dreams about. Yeah. It's like shit everybody dreams about in your hometown. Well, and also, <laughs> also... <laughs> He's he's in New Jersey, right? Which is like I don't remember if it's his hometown. I don't know if he was born in New York or New Jersey, but whatever. He's like local-ish, yeah. Originally, and so he talks about he's like so excited to get the big cheer and to retire in his home state or near his home oh, state. Oh, did he retire? No. <laughs> oh, of course. So what are you gonna do next time? Now you're gonna. I, was gonna say, now I didn't think he retired. Yeah. Now he's reliant on eye pokes, and people expect him to have a chance to win because he randomly won this absolute shit show. He better be asking specifically for that ref in the next fight. Yeah, well, and this whole event, to me, it was like Dana White tried to pull a Vince McMahon and said, oh, everybody wants us to not fight in the apex? Let's see what, let's show them what, can really happen in a shitty live show and then made it happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean pretty much. Like let's give the worst the worst refs, the worst judges. Like what was that? Oh yeah, the first fight of the main card. Um the Chitty Chitty, what's his last name? Oh yeah, Chitty in in Jakawani in, in or whatever yeah. versus Brees McKee. Okay. Yeah. Round two and three were very clear and not even that competitive for Chitty, yeah. Yeah. which I was surprised with, by the way. Yeah. I thought Reese McKee was going to come in strong at the end. Round one was close, but yeah. still I thought fairly clear Chitty, but it was close. And this one ref thinks that Reese McKee won the fight. Like, please explain, sir. Yeah. When 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 Chris Lee and Sal uh, Diamato sound like fucking genius refs compared to the other guys, there's a big problem genius refs ak you just can like be on your phone for 90 percent of the fight because it's so obvious who won yeah. genius <laughs> okay why don't we look at some of the comments i'll let you read them all right billy says weidman be- had to have a, gave that midget ref a blow job before the fight they're now dating actually weidman poked uh, sail in both eyes and then punched Silva in the back of the head. He pulled the triple douche, hard to pull off. Yeah, I, yeah. I now just... the one, the one good thing here is Weidman has this amazing ability to put karma on himself. So when he breaks true. somebody's legs, oh he immediately God, gets his leg his broken, eyes. and then he broke his leg so bad that he needed like apparently thirty surgeries. And then next fight, he breaks his leg again. So realistically, his next fight is going to be the Michael Bisming special, like for sure. He's All not right. going to have an yeah, eye. You, you guys heard it for here first. <laughs> Chris Weidman's going to lose an eye in his next fight. <laughs> Breaking news. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised at this point. Uh Pan and Bob, so I've got to cut out of here. Weird shit is happening in the hood. Dang. Oh, be careful, man. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're an American. You're armed, so just keep it close. 
What else we got? Oh, uh, Vicente Luque. I hope he retires. Yeah, that was kind of sad. I mean, I, I truly don't know how you can have that type of injury and ever be the same again. So yeah. I'm not I'm, surprised. It just sucks. They got to have say They pay so horribly in the UFC. Like, they got to make some kind of fun for, like, fighters that have to retire early. Somebody like that that put out so many fights. And they did, you need to just be able to go to him and be like, hey, you don't have to fight anymore. Like, here's a million dollars out of this fight. Like, he's go figure also, something else out. He's also one of the most exciting fighters in history with his style where he just marched forward and took shots. Oh, yeah. And that's the style that ended up screwing him over eventually. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, yep. the UFC just, they just chew these fighters up and spit them out and show that they care for, you know, just a very select few. Totally. Uh, How are the edibles feeling? Just slowing everything down a lot. My, probably yeah. my reaction time. Uh, Billy says on the prelims, the fighter Luflin, I think is his last name. Dude looked legit in his win. Guy I'm talking about defeated Pacheco on the prelims. Um, I did not watch the prelims. I thought Pacheco's the girl in uh, PFL. Did she like... Must be another Pacheco? Maybe she's a transformer and she's a dude now. I don't know. I, I really don't advice like the other way around like if you're a dude and you have a sex change to a woman like dude stay away from fighting but if you were a dude and you get a sex change to a woman like you should be fighting like you probably don't even have to be that talented you're going to be champion of the world just yeah just fucking trust me totally totally agree but they should have a rule where if you do the transition over, you're not allowed to wear a cup. That, that should I, be. I think that's fair. I think they can at least give that much up. I mean, it's still not fair at all, but it's more fair. Yeah. All right, weed man. Let's talk about some crazy shit. This wasn't supposed to just be talking about fights, right? We you want to talk about some crazy nonsense. Well, and I was gonna say though to balance, so to balance out. In sports, like women's sports, to make it more entertaining for all of us, you just let the biological women, they can take all the steroids they want, all the testosterone, everything. Just pump them to the freaking gills. We don't and want so that. So at least we get some entertainment out of it. Yeah, and but if you pump them full of testosterone. Except for the trans women, like, they can't take anything. If you pump them full of testosterone, they'll be all hairy and their jawline will get thicker and shit. We don't want that. Then nobody's going to watch women's MMA because they're just like little hairy women. Nah, <laughs> not, not interested. Well, they don't watch WNBA now and they're not hairy, but. I mean, here's the thing. Does the WNBA even exist? Because, I mean, I hear a lot of people make these arguments that, you know, the NBA should be paid the same as WNBA and all this stuff. And nobody's ever actually seen a WNBA game. Is it even fucking real? <laughs> I, I have accidentally turned a channel on a few times and it's been on there. Apparently Seattle's won at least one championship, maybe a couple. Yeah, but isn't it it's probably just AI. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's since I'm freaking old, I remember when this talk started. I was in like seventh or eighth grade and I remember being class these girls talking about like, oh yeah, there needs to be WNBA, like we play NBA and I was like, Oh yeah, you know, that sounds cool or whatever, but I'm like Who's going to watch it? Are you going to watch it? I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We would watch it. All the women would watch it. I'm like, okay, fuck. I don't know. Maybe. And then what happens? You get WNBA and women do not care at all. And then, like, they're going to get mad because men don't watch it. I don't know. I'm confused. I mean, like, obviously fighting is the sport where the difference between genders is most apparent because the yeah. physicality has to Still the most disappears. entertaining, though. Yeah, no, I'm not disagreeing with that. But, like, that's where the biggest difference is between genders, sexes, whatever you want to call yeah. it. But I'm just thinking, like, for me, by a mile, the best sport I was at was basketball. And, like, I would be, like, a very low-level college basketball player, not Division One. Yeah. Like, we don't have that here, but, like, equivalent to, I don't know, like, I'd probably play a little bit if I was Division Three and be a bench warmer in Division Two kind of thing. Um, 
and that's if I like dedicated myself more than I did. I guarantee you I could make the WNBA if I was just pretending to be a girl. Oh, I'm sure. So like the fact that that's real potentially if it's even a real place which i still don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm 45 years old and i at least i i know that i could at least do well in college women's basketball so i mean it's just like you can't have these fucking men fighting women dude and the fact that any of them ever lose is so embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> yeah because yes, like fallon is. fallon fox is the original right how many times yeah. has Fallon Fox lost? I'm going to look it up right now. She's I'm not, I think she's just lost one. She might have ended up losing two. Nah, times. dude. She's lost like a thousand times. I don't know. I remember I remember she's like 7-0 when she lost her first, and then I stopped paying attention, I guess. If she loses one round, she should be publicly executed for being absolute ass at sports and pretending to be professional Robert athletes. Says you want, Robert says you want her to talk about crazy shit? Do it, Wyatt. I mean, oh. aren't we? <laughs> I rock says little hairy women stop talking about Carla Esparza. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I mean at least she's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what the fuck? She only fought whatever he, she, whatever. Only fought five or sorry six times total. Fallon Fox. I'm shocked. I, I know it wasn't very much. Yeah. Whoa. I thought okay. she. Had, I thought she had eight fights for some reason, but yeah. Yeah, six. Okay, I'm surprised. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How much? So Billy says Weidman's probably having his thirty first surgery. I would not be surprised. He probably broke his fucking finger on this dude's eye. <laughs> right. Because he has <laughs> to have the ref's head removed from his ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I don't know. Look at Gary Coleman or uh, Gary Coleman Copeland, uh, the referee there. Maybe. I mean, Gary Gary Coltman's built like a a woman that transitioned too far. Yeah, like I was when say, from... well, I, I, maybe, maybe him and Weidman are getting it on. Who knows? I'm True. Not one to judge. All right. All right. All right. Fair enough. I could see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rock says no. She's hairy. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Come on, guys, give us an outrageous topic. Or, Mike, can they still call in when I'm on here? Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so phone number's have up, somebody... 425-791-8730. Yeah, call in. Call in, talk to me and Wyatt. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, what's really went on that's crazy lately. Well, last week, I don't, did we really talk about that bite last week? Talk about what? The bite. The bite? Yeah, oh, it was the bite, bite fight. Remember, I think I got a freaking oh. tattoo uh, of the <laughs> yeah, bite on that. his shoulder. <laughs> Did you miss that? No, sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, 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 the bite, the notorious bite. Um, I mean, okay, full transparency. I didn't see the whole fight, but the bits I did see, um, <laughs> the other dude was dirty as shit. He's fighting like a dirty little asshole. Yeah. And then, and then Buddy had enough and decided to start biting him because he, because the one guy was cage grabbing. He cage grabbed like four times oh, in yeah. the minute that I saw. And so the dude's like, all right, you go grab the cage. I'm going to grab your arm with so my how many, mouth. So how many cage grabs do you think are equivalent to a bite? I, don't, I think it depends on how hard you bite and how hard you pull the cage. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the ref's not going to take points away. Eye for an eye. I think that's what Jesus said, so. Well, it's just like Holyfield versus Tyson. Like, everybody just sees one side of the story and they never even watch the fight. Like, Holyfield headbutted the shit out of him a thousand yeah. times, which I know I know is nothing new. I know he does it to every yeah. opponent. Yeah. He says he's dirtier than Chris fucking Weidman, but, yeah. like, that's why he got bit. Like, stop fighting like a piece of shit and maybe you won't get bit, dude. But then, of course, media takes hold. Oh, my God, he bit his ear. Or, oh, my God, he bit his arm. Meanwhile, the dirty fighter, the yeah. guy who's being a fucking asshole, is, mm. like, praised and everybody has pity for. It's fucking stupid. Well, and then he goes on and does that to Hasim Rockman after that fight, and it's called a no contest. Okay, Irox says three cage grabs equals one bite. Mm. I think I think four, maybe three and three quarters. Real questions, any chance Mighty Mouse ever returns to UFC? No. 
uh, what the fuck kind of ridiculous? Who asked that question? <laughs> Billy. Billy. Okay, Billy knows better. Billy knows the answer to that. Of course not, <laughs> dude. They, Dana White treated him so bad, and oh, like yeah. I don't even. I mean, Mighty Mouse, from what I've heard, is like a little bit of a piece of shit in in person in terms of how he handles fans and whatnot. But I mean, the skills, the amount of money he should be bringing to an organization—it's not his fault. You literally didn't promote him whatsoever. Yeah, like, right. all you got to do is show a... You don't even have to show a video. Show a picture, like, three pictures of the sequence of the uh, suplex to armbar. Yeah. You should have a million fans right away. Like, that oh, was yeah. Dana's fault. Yeah. No, totally agree. Well, and then, God, who they traded him for? For freaking... Ben- I mean, they freaking traded him. They'd never traded a fighter ever. So, okay. yeah, they, I, I don't see any way it ever happened. But I got to say, I got to say... That was a good trade for the UFC, given how they promoted these guys, because Dana decided to, it doesn't matter if it's Ben Askren, doesn't matter if it's Mighty Mouse, I'm not going to pro- promote them at all. Yeah. It worked out for him, because how much hype did Ben Askren bring to the UFC? Like, he got thrown, do you remember the Robbie Lawler fight? Thrown on his head, fly, flying through the air like a fucking oh, frisbee. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, that was crazy. Yeah. And then he randomly wins in controversial fashion. And then yeah. he just goes and dies in his next... Oh, no, sorry. He randomly fought Damian Maya in what was the stupidest fight ever. Good job, Dana White and Matchmaker. just oh, killing yeah. it again. That was absolutely horrible. That was with that wicked spinning back fist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he made George Masvidal all star. So. Yeah. Billy or Rob, do you guys want to call in? So you guys are... Especially Rob. Sounds like you want to do Zoom or something. Why don't you just call in and we all talk to each other? Yeah. Rob says Mighty Mouse is making millions in one FC. Oh yeah, and he's making he's making so much more money now. But I think it, he's retired now. No, didn't he have the last fight? He is like old as shit for that um, weight class. He might have. He was just in an open jujitsu tournament where he won his weight class, and, and then, then beat a two hundred and fifty pound monster. Yeah, and then they <laughs> ask him afterwards. They're like, "Oh, you won your weight class. Would you like to do the open?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, sure. Sounds like fun." Mm-hmm craziness dude yeah psycho oh rob says i will call back all right go for it oh i guess um mighty mouse said he would love to fight brandon moreno so that so i thought maybe says billy okay i didn't hear that really i thought that was henry cejudo that wanted to fight brandon moreno not sure oh that's something did you see that brandon moreno says he's gonna take some time off okay fucking good because did you see his last fight? He fucking yeah, sucked. Yeah, he, he did not look good, yeah. That was, like, weird how much worse he looked. Like, he looked really bad. Yeah. Oh, so, for sure. I think it's a good idea. I don't know what happened to him. He just looked terrible. It didn't look like he was injured. It just looked, he looked like he sucked. Yeah, Irox says, remember the pressure when Ben said, Dana is just going to throw into the wolves. Uh, and then when he's 70, he's going to be smoking cigars laughing at me. No, I didn't hear that. All right, here's Robert. All righty. Hey, yo. Hey, what's I up? Seen, I didn't see the interview with Brandon Marino. The day he's talking about retiring, he's, he's, he's don't have the passion for it no more, he's saying. Oh, I just thought he was taking some time off. But, yeah, he did look pretty no. low. No, he's saying he don't have the passion for it no more. What did you think of his last fight, Rob? I think that was his last fight. I don't think he's going to be champion ever again. He, yeah, he realized that. He just looked so much worse than he did previously, though. It just seemed like something. Yeah, I think he realized off. that, so he just said, "Fuck, he's done." He hasn't officially retired. Like he didn't drop his gloves in the ring, but like the interview he was doing the other day, it's sure much sound like he was done. The way he's talking, he's done. Wow. When once the fighter started, like Brendan Shaw always said, once the fighter starts talking like that, once you got one foot, one foot off the door, you're done. Because yeah. you're not going to be able to beat. The UFC top of the tops, the top five. Not most you you got to be the yeah. best of your best on your best day to beat them guys. And if you got one foot out the door, you're never going to beat them guys. I mean, I agree, but we got to take this with a massive grain of salt when it's coming from fucking Brandon Schaub, who could have 18 feet in the door and still get his fucking head knocked off. <laughs> oh, no, he, he knew what he's talking about because he was. In it, and he didn't want to get out. And then Joe Rogan and Brian Cowan was like, "Hey, look, you know, like we don't like seeing you getting beat up and stuff. And like you're not gonna get the champion, you know. And also, like in his era, he also threw fires to the wolves back then. Like Prince Charles had no, no, 
he had no uh what am I word am I looking for? He had no right being in the ring with Krokop at his at his level. But didn't, that's what the UFC was at Krokop? that level. They threw their fighters to the wolves. But yeah. if they were to bring British Shaw up like they did like Sean O'Malley or something like that, British Shaw would have been a good fighter. He's a good fighter. I don't care what anyone says. I like him. I like him as a fighter, I like him as I like him as a fucking podcast, I like him as a comedian. Didn't he be like a He's a good person. He's a good father. He's a good. He's a good around dude. He can hate on all they want. They can change my mind on him. Because Joe Rogan sold me on him. I mean, yeah. anything Joe Rogan says to me is gold. You know, because I've been a Joe Rogan fan way before Joe Rogan was famous. Like back way before fucking Fear Factor even. Like I've been a Joe Rogan fan since he started comedy when he had hair. Before Fear Factor, <laughs> when he was on news radio, like I've been a fucking Joe Rogan fan. So anyone that he fucking signed, co signs for, I'm right and die for. And he co signed for Brian and fucking Brandon right away. I'm like, oh, well, he's been with Brian since like the, when he first started comedy, since uh, Brian was on, Brian Cow was on uh, Mad TV. Yeah, I'm, I'm... so like I, I mean I'm a big comedy fan as long as well as MMA fan. So like, ain't no one gonna tell me about anyone that's in, like Joe Rogan or anyone that's involved with comedy or MMA. Like I, I know both of them subjects and I've been following it for years. I've been seeing Joe Rogan <laughs> live. <clears throat> yeah, and Joe's been killing it with the podcast for I a long time. I still get to see Brendan live, but he's he kind of quit touring right now because his. his Baby girls got fucking born and she was sick, almost died. So he's like concentrating on his family and also his kids are in baseball and he's really liking that. So he's like coaches kids baseball team, and which is on weekends, which that's when comedy happens. So I understand what he's doing. He's doing shows around town. He's doing he's doing the family thing right now, but the dude's fine. You know, I love the guy. He's got so many sponsors. He's doing this truck thing now too. He's got um a uh, thing called uh Toontown, T U N E town and it's fucking he showed he's rolling his he rolled his truck and shit the truck he just built he's built another ford lightning inspired by uh the paul walker truck from uh, fast and furious yeah. yeah he's a gearhead and that's another reason why i like him too he's a gearhead i'm a gearhead i'm, I'm, I'm sure shop's a great guy but i I, dude, I, def I definitely didn't like his comedy but that's just like um well, he's, he's, he's getting better. Like, it took time, you know? He goes three, four, he's in. I mean, he, he's unintentionally uh, hilarious. Like, like, not on purpose, like, but uh, by accident. He's driving down the freeway, <laughs> and there's a car on fire, and he fucking got out of his car and rescued two kids out of the car, and the mom was dead in the front seat, and the, the, the dude that was driving was a father who tried killing the family, and then ran across the road and fucking got hit by a car and got up and shit. And Brandon had to go to court case with all that, and like he basically saved the kids' lives. And I'm like, oh, this dude's yeah. a good dude. Well, that's some karma yeah. for the father. Well, that dude's in fucking he going away to prison. Dude. That dude's mentally unstable or something. He tried killing well, his own family. Unfortunately, he didn't get ran over, and he's still living. But yeah. Well, no, he he got hit somehow. He must have been on drugs. Some he got up and started running again. Brandon's like, what the fuck? This dude must be on some. And look, but the cops showed up and they got and they got, and. I know some other bystanders tackled the guy or some shit, and the cops showed up. Yeah, I mean, we should all be able to agree, I think. Like, if somebody kills their whole family or tries to kill their whole family, like, the cops should just be able to execute that guy, like, there. Right on we the spot. Just, just, yeah. And we just don't talk right about it again. Yeah, but, like, I, all, the, all the stuff I hear about British Shop, and also, like, um, British Shop used to hate on Dana, like, always talking to Dana, hate on him. But after Dana White had uh, Joe Rogan's back during that whole, where they clipped the whole N-word a bunch of times, oh, yeah. and Joe Rogan said it, whatever, in all his podcasts. Oh, Dana said he was uh, on, threatened to leave the UFC well, over it. Yeah, he's going to quit. Yeah. If they fought, if they fought well, when um, Lex Friedman was there, when Dana called Joe Rogan and told him this, and so like. So like Shereen's like, oh fuck, Dana's good man. Well, uh, Joe Rogan called Brandon and told Brandon about this, and so Brandon's like, oh fucking Dana, I'll never hit on him again. So like now, ever since that time, I don't know if you know this, but Brandon Shaw don't say shit about fucking Dana, anything bad about him no more. Yeah. Ever since uh, that fucking happened. Yeah, no, I don't know. But... I'm sorry, I'm probably cussing a lot, huh? 
No, I think you're fine. What do you What do you think about uh, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, Rob? I don't know if oh. you ever got your opinion. I'm hearing it's 18 ounce gloves. I'm hearing it's 16 ounce gloves. I'm hearing it's headgear. So if it, no, if it's straight up, just just hypothetically, if you gave both guys 12 ounce gloves and just put them in there, like regular rules and everything, who wins? If it's if Tyson. Okay. I really do. I think it's be a knockout within the first five rounds. They're going for a knockout. The same, there's no judges' scorecards. It, it's it's knockout to win. I'm like, oh, well, that changes everything. So it's knockout to win. Tyson's going to try knocking him out. His ass out. At 58 years old. <laughs> he, he's got the power. What, what, what he, he definitely Wyatt? has the power. <laughs> well, no, I think he definitely has the power. Yeah, where's Wyatt so, at? What, what do you think, Wyatt? I think I think you're right in that he definitely has the power. I think that the big issue is simply age. I think if it was even ten years ago, also, this is a completely different ahead. story. Yeah. So yeah, I think today, I think Jake is too good at boxing. I think that Tyson is going to have slowed down way too much. I think he's not going to have any durability. I think his timing is going to be horrible because of the age and because of how long he's been out of the ring. And I think uh, I think Jake can win this pretty much, however that he wants. I mean, I think Tyson. Obviously, you can't count him out. He always has a chance. But I think, like, out of someone agree, but this is what I'm saying: is Jake's never fought him a boxer with a peak who's style like Tyson. And all Tyson needs is one hit. So if he can get in there and kind of take Jake's hits, I guarantee he can knock him out in the first two rounds. Yeah, I feel that animal. I, I, I got to disagree. I mean, I really hope Tyson would win that fight. I just think he's too old, like 30 years. I, I, just, I think he's going to knock him out in the first two, two three rounds. I hope you're right. I really do. Dude, I, I, I hope really you're right, too. Yeah. I, I would love to see Tyson win. I just I think if it's if it's real, if it's not rigged, if there's no headgear and it's a pro fight, I have a very hard time seeing a path to victory for Tyson unless he gets lucky in the first round. Yeah. And I mean, I, I I love Mike Tyson. Like I was the biggest Mike Tyson fan ever. But I mean, when he quit on the stool in two thousand five against Kevin McBride, I mean that was twenty years ago. The rules of judging it by like his last fight with Roy Jones Jr. But that was also like a gentleman's bet where they were hitting the body. We didn't see him really doing no headshots then. Oh, I thought and Mike I think... actually looked good in that fight. I I think... yeah, I did too. But yeah. I'm saying like he looked good just doing body shots. Imagine we could do with the headshots too. I think he could beat Jake. I really do. Jake's good. Don't get me wrong. I love Jake. He's good. But it it doesn't it doesn't matter how the, the age didn't make a difference with Tyson because Jake does not have the experience in the years that Tyson has. That like, like there's. Jake just started boxing the last five, six years. Tyson been doing it for like 20, 30, 40 years. You know what I'm saying? There's no way to experience. So if it's real, it's going to be a real fight, and they're going for headshots, which I heard the knockout wins, and they're not going to judge a scorecard. So that means that, like, yeah, they're going for headshots. If that's the case, then I, I pick Tyson. But there's no headshots. There's headgear. It's going to be Jake's decision all day. Do you remember Rocky Balboa, the movie? It was like the sixth Rocky movie where he comes back and he's like super old. Yeah. The one where the one where he fights Tarver? Yeah. Yeah. So Sylvester Stallone was fifty nine years old when they made that movie. And back oh then, my god, no way was he actually? Yes. Oh one year god. difference. And we I mean they had to make a movie about how ridiculous I... that would be that a fighter that old could be like a top level boxer. I mean, I'm not I, saying I, Jake Paul's top level. I, I, I got a, I got a little fucking uh, wrench to throw in here. All what right. about okay. Yo Romero? He's the fucking <laughs> Thiago Santos, and he's fucking how old? And, and I don't think that's how old he is. I think he's older than they say he is. So I mean, come on. Really? I got I got a good rebuttal to that. Sure. Okay, so let me just look up. Unless, Rob, do you know exactly how old Romero is right now? I can barely hear Wyatt, by the way. I should have, oh, like, okay. have one. On the phone, I can barely hear Wyatt. So oh. you got to tell me what he's saying. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, can you hear me at all, Rob? Nope. Shit. Okay, well, anyway, here's here's my argument with Romero. Actually, before I do that, chat, can you hear me? Can the people listening hear me right now? I'll wait a few seconds and we'll see. Okay. 
You can still hear me clear, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can hear yeah, you. Okay. I can barely hear him when you're not talking. Okay. Why well, well, I can relay here then? Oh, I'm going to put on my chat too. Okay, Billy says you can hear me. Okay, so ho hopefully, work. hopefully Rob can hear some of this. But th this is my rebuttal to the wrong, the the Yoel Romero point. So Yoel Romero right now is forty six years old. It says here, so he's going to be twelve years younger than Mike Tyson will be when he fights Jake Paul. And you have to keep in mind, in addition to that, Yoel Romero is somebody who's done very very well athletically later on in his career. He basically started his UFC career at 35 or 36 years old. He got into his prime at like 40, 42 kind of thing. And I think everybody can agree in the past couple of years, he's declined a lot. Um, and that's potentially with taking, I'm going to say more steroids because I refuse to believe that he was never on anything beforehand um, in, in Bellator or PFL or wherever he is now. Um, so, yeah, he, he hit his prime way later. Tyson's prime was at about 20. Yoel's prime was at about 40. And uh, I just, like, Mike Tyson was never the same after he was, like, 23, 24, maybe at the latest. So to think that Romero no. is comparable is crazy to me. Yeah. exactly how it went down yeah that was a different situation with the divorce but no he went to jail for uh, uh desiree washington she's that miss yeah, america that was pageant. she was a miss america pageant lady yeah yeah the miss america pageant chick yeah <clears throat> can, can yeah. you hear rob now billy <laughs> say something rob <laughs> say something yeah Give me one second. <laughs> I'm fucked up. Oh, man. Billy just like, said we couldn't hear you. I, I, like, so. I think I'm a beard over 32. <laughs> That's grabbed another one. Whose idea was this for, for me to be super high? Wasn't it your Dude. own idea? I, I think it was IROC. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bill, Billy says I think about doing like a 24 hour shoot with just me chilling and drinking and smoking just so you guys can see I'm for real. Like, I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we believe you, you're high, Rob. I think, I, think, I think a lot of people think I'm bullshit. Like, nah, not, no, no, I, no, I really no one would, from like no one would think Tyson to, wins that fight. Two o'clock in the night. Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I smoke, like, I mean, I smoke two ounces a fucking a month. I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> I don't think anyone can out trigger smoking. I've never quit. I never tapped out. People tried. Seems like everybody's making money off of weed, though, but like none of the weed stocks ever do good. I've, I've owned three weed stocks and they all. I was just thinking about this today. Like, my whole life, like, I wish weed was legal and shit. Like, I was a businessman, all this stuff. Like, man, now weed's legal. Like, why should. There's no way I shouldn't be involved with the weed industry somehow or some way or growing it or doing something or consulting people or something because damn i got so much knowledge in this head <clears throat> and now it's legal it takes like a investment like a natural like uh initial investment to start something you know yeah <clears throat> i know those i know those licenses are super expensive they're Oh, they're hard to get out here too, especially. They're really hard yeah. to get here too. They're over a million dollars. They get, in California, they give them to everybody, but out here, they're hard to get a license to to have a business for marijuana. It took like forever for them to get them out here. Huh. <clears throat> and they're not like the California shops either. 
California shops, you walk in, there's fucking jars of weed, you know, fucking, yeah. you'd smell it, look at it. This, you, they, you go up to like a tablet and you fucking look at a fucking digital screen and you to pick which one you want and fucking they bring it to you. Oh, that's how it is in Massachusetts? Yeah, they bring like the, the amount you want. Oh, like weird. you don't get to see it first and check it out and smell it, like huh. feel it, like and count oh, it, yeah, it, check no, it out, feel it's it. It's totally different. It. <laughs> yeah, it's totally different here. Just the one thing is, like, is you kind of have to, you have to stay with the bud tender. Like everything's behind glass and stuff, you know. But you can see. Your oh yeah, they have armored guards in Cali. They have yeah. it's behind glass and everything like that. Yeah. But they'll like hand it to you and let you see it. Uh, Billy says back to fight talk. Any thoughts about Garbrandt versus Divis and Fredo? Um, I, I think Figueroa. I think Garbrandt got. I think Garbrandt's gonna get him. I think Figueroa's um got fucking spooked after the last time he got knocked out. Uh, I, I I think Figueroa is is gonna. I think he's him. done. You think Figueroa's done? I think he's done. I think he got, um. You know, some people once they lose their chin, they're done. I think he. he I think after Brendan Moreno got him. I think he's done. Man, you don't think uh, Garbrandt yeah, lost his chin? Garbrandt's going to Garbrand, be knocked out Garbrand's way more times. surprise a lot of people watch. But I'm saying Garbrandt's been knocked out way more times than Figueredo. Well, yeah, yeah, why, why do you think Figueredo's more done Garbrand, than Garbrandt? Didn't he change weight classes too to Garbrandt? Yeah. But, yeah, so, yeah, he's got a much better chin now. And I think he's... He's going to go on a tear for the title watch. Uh, he's going to surprise everyone. He's going to make one last hurrah. I hope he but does. It's, but it's the other way around, because Garbrandt's fought his entire career at 35. He's only taken one fight at 25. How old is and Garbrandt then... anyways? He's young still, right? Yeah, I think he's... 34, 35? Uh, something like that. I'm not I'm not positive. No. Whereas Figueredo went up in weight, which should help his chin. Oh, yeah, that's right. Figueredo went up in weight, too. Yeah. No, not, not two. He's the only one who went up in weight. Yeah. Garbrandt's fought his whole career at the same weight class except one fight. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. So. Uh, all right. Billy says Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. Who takes it? Uh, I hope Jim Miller does it. I hope so he does too, but I think Bobby Green is going to be Bobby too Green's fast. Bobby Green's a badass, though. Bobby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Jim Miller needs to do it for his last hurrah. I think but out Jim of Miller, every, if he wins, he's saying he wants to keep going. I think out of every fight on UFC three hundred, the person him. I want to win the most is Jim Miller. Out of all of them. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think me too. Does he have the most wins in the UFC history right now? He's right there. He, he, if he's not number one, he's real close. I think he is number one. I think he's number one. It, well, at least in that division in that weight class. Yeah, I feel like he's Does number one have, overall. Does anyone know some of the answer to that? Yeah, it is Jim Miller. I just looked it up. He's oh. he's has twenty six and second place is only twenty three, so he's miles ahead. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wants to get thirty wins, he said. Imagine if that guy hadn't had Lyme disease though. True. What's up? But maybe maybe that re motivated him though. Maybe that actually helped long term. Maybe. I would say Jim imagine if... had Lyme disease? Oh yeah, for like three years. Oh, that should all that can kill you. Yeah. He, he was fighting with it. He didn't know he had dog. it. The, the, my cousin <clears> that I'm staying with right now, the last dog died from my disease. Yeah, yeah. He, he had it through his career. He was fighting with it because he didn't know he had it. I just pulled a tick on my dog two years ago, and I'm freaking out. Oh. Hope she don't get Lyme disease. Oh, I'm glad we don't have ticks over on the west side. Oh, we got really bad ticks out here in New Hampshire. Oh. Yeah. In Massachusetts, yeah, they're really bad. I didn't get him here where I'm at, though. I got him when I was at my house, fucking where it's concrete, so it makes no fucking sense, but I, I guess they fucking can go anywhere. Uh, Billy says, who's going to headline UFC 302? Is it Leon Edwards? Uh, probably. I think so. Is that in England? I thought it was. Oh, I mean, it sounds like it. Which, about Leon fight? Edwards. <clears throat> Which one is that one? That's 302. That's a... That's a fight. Three, three? I think. Wh- which fight? Abu Dhabi. Which fight is that? No that's idea. Three or three? Yeah, I'm not sure. Sure. Well, that's the one. Um, uh, Chimiev and uh, whatever. That, okay, so the, Chim- 
the Chimaya fight is not there. It's actually in Saudi Arabia. And it's oh, also yeah, Saudi Arabia, I mean. And it's also a fight night. It's not a pay per view. Okay. That's gonna be a fight night? Yeah, it's like at a real fight night on like these bullshit ones we've had for the past like month straight. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is what you get when you get forty six fight forty six cards a year. I mean, Mike, think about how what was it like last week or the week before and you're saying how this week's was so much better than that week's yeah meanwhile oh, our... fight finally getting announced it's gonna be an international fight week for sure i mean Chandler. hopefully nice yeah no hopefully he... no, it's Hope, no i'm just it's saying gonna happen. Diego hopefully he makes waiting it for after the whole uh roadhouse promotion you know fucking media thing and after he was done doing that his obligation with that they were able to announce the fight. I'm they, still going with they, Connor never fights again. Right, yeah, it's hard to, I mean, it's hard to know just because he's a full-blown drug addict pretty clearly in the most recent interviews, so hopefully oh, yeah. he's okay. I said to Mike the other day, because I used to do drugs, he's on benzos and some kind of methamphetamine, either Adderall or straight methamphetamine, because when you mix those two, you get them twitches when you come down, and I used right. to do that drug, and I used to twitch like that when you mix those two drugs. Oh, so there you go. So I mean, yeah, so the, before he fights, he needs to get that like sort of sleep. I've, I've, had, I've been up for ten days. You know, I've been like asleep under a twist like that. No, he, it was straight, not exhaustion. It was him on drug coming off. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I, I, I'll put my money on it. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. You, I've been there, done that. I've twitched like that. Yeah, you, your eyes blink, <clears throat> your your shoulders shrug. You can't control it. And even fucking Jake Gyllenhaal was looking at him like, what the fuck is going on with him? Like, he kept seeing Jake Gyllenhaal look over at him like, what the fuck during that interview? I thought uh, Jake did a pretty good job there. He was basically like, caring for a fucked up child. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it looked like. <clears throat> and I watched another thing where they went to a, like a sneaker store. Him and, him and Connor went shoe shopping and shit. And Connor looked all fucking... Hooked up out of his mind, she's all jazzed up. Yeah, I want these, I want these for my kids. Yeah, oh, and Joe's yeah, like not saying control. much about his shoes. Like, yeah, I like these shoes, you know. But Carver's doing all the talking. Like, like, oh, this dude's all fucked up. Oh yeah, well, they just they He's just partying. went after P Diddy. Watch if they get P Diddy, they're gonna go after Connor next. I'm telling you. Skeletons what about, what about fucking John Jones? This guy just slips through the cracks yet again. Oh, he's <laughs> right. He's gonna get away. Dude, I think he's got some shit like the Epstein shit. Who's gonna get Those away? Powerful people. <laughs> Pete Diddy's gonna get away. Like he's not gonna go to prison. He's gonna either get ki- killed or he's gonna let go because he's got shit on people. He's got tapes, <laughs> like of powerful people doing some pretty, pretty crazy shit like Epstein. Yeah, I, I heard. I, I just hope. So all, like, I, just hope all I think government knows that. The FBI knows that. They went to go get the tapes so no one else sees them tapes. Oh, and they're just keeping them on the raft. Because then they have go and, and let him go to Antigua. <laughs> his jet came back from Antigua, but he didn't come back on his jet. But Antigua has extradition laws, so they can send him back. But I think from Antigua, he's going to go somewhere else. Like, I think the FBI says don't come back to America, just disappear. You guys, you guys are slipping in Canada, Wyatt. Shit on some other people. Wyatt, you guys are slipping in Canada. You have, like, one piece of shit politician, your president... We have like 300. I know. We need to get our numbers up. Right. You can't even fucking we, do that, right? Yeah, Trudeau, right? Still? Yeah, the, the GOAT. <laughs> the GOAT, yeah. I mean, he did freeze people's bank accounts, so that is, that's a pretty that's a pretty baller supervillain move. But at least he didn't freeze publicly like all your politicians do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Just he wouldn't let, he he would let no one leave the country. Canadians were literally locked down. They couldn't leave Canada. Canada. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't leave fucking Canada, man. Fucking Canada. I hate Canada. <laughs> yeah, no, it is pretty messed up. I don't disagree. It was pretty messed up, man. I got friends up in Canada, too, that I talked to. They said they were, like, it was bad. Yeah. But at least, at least we could watch your politicians like have strokes live on TV to like have comedic relief in our in our time of need, you know. That is true. But did they show all that stuff in, on TV in Canada? You're yeah, um, until they passed that bill where all we see is maple syrup and beaver tail. What? 
<laughs> we've talked about this. I don't think they're going to pass it, but it's still up in the air. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. But they're going to block them. Basically, you're not going to be able to watch hardly anything on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even get to exist. It's going to be fun. Yeah. That would be, uh, that would be horrible. Okay, Mike, I got an idea. Do commercials like they do in Europe, though, where like, they showed like, titties and shit, nudity, in Canada? Uh, I think it's about the same as the States, man. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Same as down here, all right. Because I know like, in Europe and stuff, you go to like, watch their fucking commercials, and like, it's showing it. Yeah. All sorts what? of crazy shit. Yeah, what, what were you going to say, Wyatt? <clears throat> Have you seen the new Roadhouse, Mike? No, I haven't. Okay, so here's my idea. I think you should watch it live on stream or you should make a reaction video to it. Because it's absolutely it? hilarious how Connor acts in that because he doesn't act at all. He's just like a little crackhead the whole time. And I think you'd love it. Oh, no, I think you should do. Mike wants me to do a review of that. I was going to do that. Oh, yeah, we could do Well, we could do a live reaction. He's saying... We should do it together. Several, yeah, several people have said... I thought it was a dumb idea, but then several people said... But they thought a live reaction to that movie would be good, so might have to I do was it. thinking about it when he said something. I'm like, man, I don't know how we can do it, but we should do something like that. Yeah, well, you just can't show the movie. You'd have to watch it. With like, no, I'm saying, saying like, if like we're both watching it and we're like we're on Zoom though, and we're like yeah. both reacting to what each other is seeing. Yeah, it could work. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Watt should do something. We're going to do something together. Yeah, I mean, I'm open. So you got, you got Wyatt's, yours and Wyatt's knowledge, and my so much scrambled brain with knowledge, and I bring a little fucking humor to the thing. We can do something funny. Yeah. And also knowledgeable, too. Billy, who yeah, says I'm, the F word too I think much? there's nothing like our channel out there. Oh, I really think us. Our, our, our <laughs> yeah, because I say the F word like all the time. like ours out there, like our community, the knowledge we have, how we interact with each other. Like, I've seen other channels. They don't interact with me interact. Like, yeah, we interact with like fucking retards. The there's channel. the F word again. <laughs> <laughs> there's that number 208, Billy. <laughs> I'm going for a record. Billy, I preferred it back when you used to talk like Canadians, you know, where you put the U in all the words. Here, I'll give you some examples of how we type. Uh, <laughs> That's cool when my little brother came in the chat. That's true. Yeah, that was cool. <clears throat> That's good. We're uh, talking finally. It's been a long time coming. All right. 13 years in the making. I mean, I don't know, Billy. I, dude, I, I honestly think we all say the F word like an insane amount. <laughs> so I didn't even, I honestly didn't even know who you're yeah, talking about. I, I guess I wrong, but it's all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I think we all swear a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> we should do a rumble thing <laughs> on the side. You yeah. know, do this, but also rumble. Oh, yeah. You can do them both. Uh, Billy asks if White can speak French. Uh, I took French in school from grade 7 through grade 12, but oh, absolutely shit. not. More than I do then. Yeah. Nah, dude, I can't speak French at all. I've forgotten it all in the past years. Well, they only speak it in Quebec, right? Uh, no, they speak it. It's the first language in Quebec, but in New Brunswick, um, they speak it like almost perfectly equally so like if you go to um new brunswick on all of the food everything is in french and english in the same size writing huh so. hmm. interesting yeah my grandma spoke spoke french i never understood it though huh. well rob you must know how to say the f word in french right no you oh. should probably get on what there. was that you don't know how to say the f word in french no why not? That's your thing. <laughs> well, uh, no, I never learned it. I learned Mexicans a lot. Okay. Fair enough. I grew up in Southern California. 
how did you end up on the East Coast then? Uh, well, I was born here in Lowell, Massachusetts. When I was two months old, my, my mom and dad moved to California in 1979. And I grew up there. And um, I got disabled when I was like 18. Well, I fell when I was 18, but I didn't get disabled until I was like 25. And I was taking care of my father, who was dying, and he's disabled. But I was all right. And then my disability got so bad where I couldn't help him no more so i had to go live with my mom she was, she was taking care of me and then she was living in a 55 and up community a trailer park where, and they found out i was living there and you only have visitors for like 21 days right and so i was like i was staying there for a few weeks and going to my friend's house who lived in the same park his parents happened to move there from my dad's town it's just a, a fucking flying luck that his parents moved there as my best friend so me and him were still hanging out doing drugs and stuff and uh, bounce back and forth between each other's houses, so we're kind of like breaking the law, but loophole. And then my step, I think my stepdad just was tired of it, and he was friends with the security guard. He said, hey, look, my son's living here. I don't want him here no more, and he got me kicked out. So my mom started fucking calling around, asking everyone in California if anyone could kick me in. She was asking strangers at like liquor stores and grocery stores, hey, can I rent a room from you, I'll, you know, for my son, you know? I'm like, Mom, would you quit it? <laughs> and then finally she called it back east out here to her family, because that's where we're from, and her niece, my cousin, said she'll take me in and help take care of me, and that's where I ended up here eight years ago. All right. And she's been taking care of me ever since. Well, I was living with her for a few months, and I live with this, the cousin I'm at right now in New Hampshire. I'm visiting. Well, I live with him and his wife, for like three years in Nashville, but then we had a falling out. So I went back to fucking my other cousin in Massachusetts and lived with her for the last three years. And now I'm just over here visiting back and forth because me and him are kind of cool again. So what were the injuries you sustained from the fall you had when you were younger? I've had a crazy life. And this cousin who I'd known from when I was a kid, he he moved in with my mom when I was 15 years old, the one I'm visiting right now. He he moved in when he was like 21, moved out there. So when I was 15, I had a 20 year old cousin with me, so he's buying me alcohol and stuff. So, and I had a 20 year old friend with me too at the time. So, I see. My rock says, dang, crazy life. Still Dude, my parents' thing was sure. as long as I'm home. They didn't care what I did. If I got drunk and got stupid, whatever, as long as I was home and safe, they were happy, you know? Because it was a bad, rough neighborhood, and I was running the streets a lot, too, so they worried a lot. But uh, when I was home, they were happy. So they let me drink at home. And then my friends, parents didn't know my mom worked nights at a nightclub. So they'd be like, hey, we're going to go stay at Rob's house tonight. And they're like, all right. And then they didn't know that it was just me there by myself. So we'd just get drunk all night. Then my mom come home and there'd be like eight of my friends pass out all over the house on the floor. She'd be stepping around bodies to get to her room. What, what we really want to know is, do you guys believe in UFOs? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I think probably... I don't know. I'm not. I don't have a strong opinion either way. But I don't think they're. I don't think they're aliens. I think they're. I think they're our government. I think it's just technology that no one's seen before. Every time it happens, it's like technology that's five or ten years in advance that no one's heard of. So that's what I think is going on. I don't think it's like out of this planet. I just I think, think it's unidentified. Probably, yeah. I think it's probably the most logical explanation that it's... Yeah, it's just like the drones, like, um, or the hovercraft, uh, the little, uh, what are those things? Yeah, the little drones that you fly with your fucking goggles and shit for, like, doing yeah. videos and stuff. Yeah. Those things can zip and fly, like, from one spot to another and change directions in a, in a quick of an eye. Well, that's what people were seeing 10 years ago, thinking they're flying saucers. They're probably just drones. Yeah. Little fucking little <laughs> little fucking four wheel software things, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, because you know they had drones. Like, and I didn't realize this till recently. They had drones back in the fifties. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Probably All this shit that. that people are seeing is shit that that's ten years in advance. That we're because they like with government and stuff, they won't release what's going on until ten years later. So 
our opposing people don't fucking get with our technology and catch up. So, like, whenever we find out something 10 years, like, right now we're finding out about the drones and everything. Well, just imagine that shit was going on in the 70s. We're just finding out about it now, you know? We talk a lot about that stuff in the States, but, like, why it, like... Do, do they talk uh, about that in Canada? Is there like conspiracy? Oh yeah, so you know in Canada? I mean, we just hear about the stuff that they talk about from the states. Like, I don't know if you guys realize that. Like, all oh, you guys don't have them up there though. Like, no sightings up in Canada. Nah, I mean, not that I know of. The thing that we do have. Do you have any nuclear power plants up there? I don't know. Certainly not near me. Um, but the thing that we have a ton of, go, that's where they get power. <laughs> the thing that we have a ton of is Bigfoot sightings because Duncan, which is very close to where I live, has the most Bigfoot sightings out of anywhere in the world. So, okay. yeah, uh, Bigfoot out of all the ones that might be true, it would have to be Bigfoot because I sure. think it actually, you know, I believe that could be true. It's only for the simple fact is. Because every place around the world, back before there was, like, internet and photos and stuff, yeah. had stories of Bigfoot. Like, in China, they have the Yeti. Like, over mm-hmm. in Asia, they have the Yeti. Over here in the Northwest, they have a Sasquatch, and they have a skunk ape down south. Like, it's all, it's too many, too many different stories about the same Bigfoot thing. it got to be real. But they're probably not around no more, but they were around at one point. That's what I believe. Well, we know that they were around at one time because they have, like, skeletons and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, but there might be a few around still because uh, where you live, especially the Northwest, man, that's wooded area, man, like... You can camouflage and disappear easy. Well, same thing, Wyatt, I think that's considered Pacific Northwest where you're at, right? Yeah, I mean, it's most of where I live is very similar to uh, the forest that you guys have in Washington. So. Yeah, you're in Alaska, but Pacific Northwest, right? Um, Toronto? Or not Toronto, um, uh, British Columbia? No. Yeah, no, I'm in British Columbia. I'm in like the yeah. furthest south part of British Columbia. Have you heard Kelowna? Are you, are you close to Kelowna? It's a way, it's probably like a, it's about a two hour ferry ride and about a seven hour drive. Yeah, okay. I know some friends that are on Kelowna. That, dude, I'm not surprised at all. That's like the drug capital of BC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> yeah, it's the weed trade. Back in the day. The, they call it the Amber Triangle. Yeah. I can tell you guys the stories about Humble County and all that stuff and stories our trips to vegas on drugs when i was like 16 like hey i got stories for days i just wanted a book mike but i don't know if anyone would buy it because i'm not like a famous person <laughs> like maybe like just like i don't know just write like a, a short story for just the channel or something maybe i don't know yeah maybe i mean uh so. <laughs> just something to crack me love I was thinking about com- becoming a comedian. I really do. Like, I got, like, stories and stuff. I just got to figure out how to, like, structure my... I was thinking about how I was, like, a really a, a taxi or Uber driver for the the Mexican cartel. Yeah, right. Like, like whenever, you know, right? Like, five like, minutes or something and uh, just post it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that, for sure. Yeah. See how people like it. Yeah, I want to start a channel. I just don't know what to do on it yet. And also, I don't feel comfortable, like, with my background. That's the thing. Like, the, where I live, where I'm at now, it's fine. But where I live, it's pretty shitty. So, like, I don't want to have that my background in video too much. Like, you guys seen it. Like, oh, I see, I, oh, I see, I see. oh, yeah, you just need to use a green screen. Yeah, or, yeah like, like literally, dude, literally anything. Up, I'd probably feel more comfortable doing it, yeah. but I'm just embarrassed. Yeah. In my life. I'm actually not in the octagon right now. Believe it or what not. the fuck? Are you serious? Is it all a fucking lie? What the hell, man? All a lie. Oh, what do you think about, um. <clears throat> what's gonna happen 
happen to Francis um, Ngannou next? Who do you think he's going to fight? Well, he's, he's fighting Dan Fajaya right uh, next in MMA. Um, and then I figured he might fight Wilder, but apparently Wilder's going to fight that Asian heavyweight Zhang, the one that just also oh, lost really? to Joseph Parker. I didn't hear that. I didn't yeah. hear that either. Yeah, I just seen that today online. I can't remember where I seen it. So I was thinking he's going to fight Deontay Wilder next, but Deontay Wilder's going to fight, so that ain't going to happen. So yeah, like I told you guys, two years, Francis is going to be irrelevant. No one's going to know who he is. He's going to be doing nothing. He made all the money in two years, and that's it. He's going to have no career. What he said? He said what? He was what MAA for what four or five years? That's nothing. That's no career. He's going to be nobody. He's known to me. I don't. I like this story where he came from and how he got here, but how he got to the title, the UFC title, and everything. Like, yeah, he ain't really a champion. He he defended enough. He ain't nobody to me. I really don't care for the guy as a, as a fighter, but as a human being, he's a great guy. Well, I know why it's a big fan of Francis. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a huge fan of the person, but as a fighter, he ain't that big of a dude. He, he sucks. He really does as a fighter. He ain't got no skill. He, hasn't he, been doing he it sucks as a fighter? Would... Dude, how can you say he sucks, man? <laughs> well, just as, as compared to like people fighting since they were four years old, he ain't got that kind of skill. Well, And that's fair, but like, the, he, he, he doesn't... In the belt. In the he doesn't need in it. UFC. Like, he's not going to get that again. He's, if he went back to UFC, he would never be a champion again. I think he got lucky. I really do. Uh, well, I totally defended. disagree. He defended enough. I rock, he defended yeah, one time. I, I rock, yeah, he I trust one. you as long as you don't send, put a virus on you or something. Go for it. <clears throat> hey, would he defend it one time? His belt? Francis? Yeah, he defended it about against Gone, and he defended it with one leg because his knee was still was blown out. But Dana didn't care and forced him to fight anyway. I gotta say, the run Francis went on. I mean, I I think he was one of the greatest heavyweights to go into the MMA and the UFC. I mean, I don't like, think so. I think he got lucky getting to the top. I mean, the longest streak anybody's he's he's had. He swung for the fences. He's just powerful, so he got lucky punches. That's, that's what I think. That's heavyweight, though. I mean, Fred, Stipe has but he had a, but the he had, longest he had streak ever. He, he didn't put time in, though. That's why I don't give him the credit, because he didn't put time in like everyone else did. But, I mean, Stipe, like I said, he had the longest streak ever. That's four wins. That's four Stipe's title defenses. Stipe's a great heavyweight all the time to me. If you ask me, <laughs> if, if John Jones beats him, then John Jones gets my praise in the heavyweight title, like Bass Man on Planet. But, um, John Jones is the best MMA fighter to me, but to be the best man on the planet, you'd be an heavyweight champion. And if John Jones beats Stipe, then John Jones to me is the best ever to do MMA and heavyweight ever. But I love Stipe. Stipe, I hope Stipe could do it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I got my fingers toes crossed, but like, I love Stipe so much, man. The firefighter, he's just a guy's guy, man. I, I, mean, I just John don't Jones, see to me is the best ever do it, but I still want Stipe to win just to show people that a regular guy can do it. Just a fucking blue collar worker can do it. You know, he didn't he, yeah. he he didn't dedicate his whole life to Miss Martial Art. He did Miss Martial Art and firefighting. Like he did two different things. He really had a full time job. Yeah. And not I, most, just, most, I just I don't think he's gonna have much had, I don't think he's going to have much of a chance. Full -time job. I don't know any. Yeah, I, I just don't think that he's going to have much of a chance against John Jones at John his, Jones. At his I, age. I and I, I also, I, I don't think it really proves anything for John Jones beating Steve Bates. No, it doesn't. Though. But I think John Jones is the best ever doing it. Hmm. I think he'd beat Aspinall too, but I think John Jones is done after he's done with Steve Bates. I, 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 I think Aspinall beats John Jones right I think, now. I think what's going to happen is. After this fight, John Jones, Steve Green, Ralph from the Sunset, and Tom Aspinall, after he, he's in, he wants to fight again to, to defend his interim belt. I think he's going to fight, defend that belt, and he's going to fight whoever they put against him for the vacant belt after Steve and Jones fights. But he's, he's not going to fight. He's, Tom Aspinall is not going to fight the Steve Jones, I don't think. You think Jones just retire after the Stipe fight? Uh, I think so too. Yeah, that he don't need we'll to prove notes. I, yeah, he I, defended it once. I don't. I don't think anybody beats Aspinall right now, though. I don't think so either. Yeah, you don't think Jones beats him? 
If they're uh, hot. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. That's a tough one. I mean, I'm sure I'm biased to Love Jones, but like Tom Asimov, like Sean said, he's, I think he's the real, he's the new, he's the new deal. He's the real deal. He's all, all around good fighter. Yeah, he's just like a, I don't know, he's like a linebacker, like a football body type. And... Well, he's an example of what you're talking about, Rob, somebody who's done MMA since they were a child, and he's a heavyweight, which just makes him infinitely more skilled than everybody else. Exactly. Yeah. Also, Mike, I think even you would admit that Prime and Ganu beats Prime Stipe, no? Uh... Nagano? Probably, yeah, probably. He don't have the wrestling, though. No. Yeah, he does. I don't think so. I do. That's, I that's think he showed. Number one crutch is he has no wrestling. I think. I think he's got. I think he's got enough wrestling to catch Steve. He, he had that one wrestling fight where he like his knee was fucked up and he beat, but was it gone? Yeah. Or he's laid on top of him for the fucking whole fight. Yeah, yeah but you can't use that as an okay. example because he was so but, uh, hurt in that fight. He wasn't he was had a little technique down there, though. He was not trying to do submissions. He was not trying to do... He wasn't even ground down, really. I mean, he has submission wins in the UFC. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, had more submission wins than I thought he did. lower level guys. I mean, they're UFC level guys, but yeah. Yeah. Like, it is heavyweight, yeah, so I'll give you that. Not, not even in <laughs> the top 10. Yeah. He ain't got no submissions against. Oh, well, no. Yeah, but just... have you... Rob, do you remember the fight with... Um, Stipe and Nganu, their second fight. Like he out wrestled him. He made him look like an idiot. He made him look like he didn't belong in there with him. And I know Stipe was aging, but just the physical differences well, that Nganu has. It was a short nose fight. Or not short nose, but he, he didn't have much time. Like it was, yeah, it was kind of short nose, not short nose, but like it wasn't a full fight camp. I think it was too soon. I don't think Stipe should have fought him. Though. They pressed it. You know what that means? It means Stipe fight him. You know what that, that makes time, me I realize? Think... The fight that we really missed is Daniel Cormier and Francis. Yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah. No, Joe, the fight that MMA community always want to see was GSP and Khabib. Dude, well, I think it was GSP and Anderson Silva. That's the one I wanted to see. Well, back then, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's like, we're ever talking like pound for pound that division who's better to be for GSP. I would like to see it happen to because I love them both. I can't. I couldn't decide. I can't tell you guys which one I pick, but I'd love to see it, and that's one I wish that would ever happen, but it's never going to happen. That's the one that got away. That's the only fight I wish out of all the fights ever in MMA history is just being a beef. I wish I would have seen that happen. Oh, there's a I lot of. There's a lot GSP of. Them. I wish I would have seen. I think GSP might have beat me. Maybe hey. he's that good. He's all around that good. But yeah. I don't need. I mean, I'm Canadian, so I'd obviously pick Habib. <laughs> <laughs> you think Habib? I, I don't know who wins that. I don't know. Really. I don't know. I think that's 50 50. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's 50 50. I mean, if, if, if they fought 10 out of 10, it'd probably be like a draw. Like, they both win 5 of 5, you know? I think, like it'd be, I, I think it'd be just well rounded, a best fight ever in MMA history. But we're never, it would never happen. Well, I think there's a lot of question marks because oh, GSP was Jones and Nagano. That was a fight we never got to see, and that's never going to happen. That I wish I would have seen because I want people to see how bad Nagano really is. <laughs> I think Nagano would kill him. I want to see him just like get embarrassed because he will show there's levels to this game and he's nowhere near John Jones' level. Skill wise, he's not. He's champion. If yeah. he's like, if, if John Jones just, just decimated him in the first round, it just showed the world that Francis Ngannou was never a champion. He just, he got lucky. I mean, Rob, what, 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 you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when Francis Ngannou employs the Weidman strategy and just pokes the living shit out of Jones's eye and gets the gets the victory that way? <laughs> then what? Tonight was weird. That was a crazy night. What the fuck was going on? I, can't, I couldn't believe he pokes him in one eye with one hand. Then he pokes him in the other eye with the other hand. Then when he goes down, he's like, ah, oh, you poked me in the eye. He, like, throws a couple of hammer fists and the rest stop the fight. It's like... If that happened in WWE, people would walk out. And the dude won, though. Like, why won? Like, no. what the? What is going on? With... Oh, man, dude. 
I wonder if Dana White said about this. I guess I can't wait to see tomorrow's fucking. Oh, Dana White always has fucking something to say when there's controversy. Dude, I bet John Jones was celebrating so hard. Somebody finally did my move. Look at that oh, shit. It's catching on. Let's go. Hey, they are both from New York. Did John Trainer do that? You know? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Huh? What, what does the eye poke dummy look like? Just like? Probably just they bring in Daniel Cormier and poke the living shit out of his eyeball. Yeah. He's an eye poke motherfucker, too. I yeah, and where, where did he learn that? Where did he learn that? I like him yeah. as an Olympic wrestler, but I like him as an MMA fighter. Yeah. He's, I, I love him watching like Olympic wrestling. I, I followed yeah. his college career and everything, but when he got into MMA, I did not like him. I didn't like his attitude. I didn't like how he. Oh, DC? John oh, Jones. DC. Like, yeah. DC's <laughs> my boy. Crying, you shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why That's why it's boy there, Rob. He's yeah, my favorite fighter. I'm, sorry, Wyatt, but... <laughs> I'm John Jones. He's dead, dad. He's right there. He's the, uh, Joe Rogan said the best. He's the best man on the planet. Dana White said too. If those two guys say he's the best man on the planet ever to ever do it, I'm saying the same shit. I don't care what anyone says. Yep, yeah, yeah, but Rob, they, they meant they meant that. They meant that literally. He's the baddest man on the planet. AKA, he does the most crime. He hits the most drunk, like women. He's always drunk. He's, he's beating the shit out of his wife. He's hitting pregnant women with cars. He do wrestling. He do. He do it all. He's only lost like two rounds ever in his whole career. He lost three against Dominic Reyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, he lost two against Dominic Reyes. That's the one I'm talking about. He, he lost. Three. He lost the first. He definitely lost the first three. I, I, I say two. He, you, he, I don't, I didn't you, would, you would be the fourth person it I have close, met. But I don't think Dominic Reyes won. Yeah. Well, the so, third... so Rob, does that mean you only watched the first two rounds? <laughs> Dude, he went downhill after that. I'm surprised, he, I'm surprised he's still fighting. He's coming to fight next, actually. I thought he retired after that fight. Well, he had a mental breakdown because he just beat the greatest fighter of all time, and then he didn't get any credit for it. Yeah. Because of people like you telling him that he lost. Did you guys hear about the Volkov fight coming up um, against... Um... Fuck, who's he fighting? Pavlovich. Is it Pelvich? Yeah. Oh, Pelvich will knock fight. him out. Pelvich will knock him out. Yeah. Quick fight. Dude, why are they doing that to Ozdemir? <laughs> Ozdemir? Uh, is it Volkov or Ozdemir? I mean, yeah, uh, Volkov, I mean. Oh. Ozdemir's fight, too, though, coming up. Yeah. So many of those, so many of those guys that light heavyweight and heavyweight are just, like... Long in the tooth. Well, yeah, and there's nobody to replace him. Like the heavyweight division, like Jones is gonna retire, Francis is yeah, gone, and Tom. Who's Pal Aspinall gonna fight? And nobody. And is yeah. like... He already knocked Pavlovich out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he already knocked Pavlovich out, so like yeah, I don't, there's no one. Like once I don't think there's no one. Once John Jones is TP Leaf, it's gonna they're probably gonna do a rematch between Tom Aspinall. And Pavlovich for the belt. Yeah, that's what I'm calling. Well, you and can't, you can't Tom pay. Get yeah. it. You can't pay heavyweights what they're paying UFC fighters and expect to get any talent. Yeah. Um, the UFC is still paying like pretty close to what they were paying in like 2008. You go to the NFL; those guys are paying ten times with sometimes maybe not ten times but five times. Like there's guys that are making fifty, sixty million dollars a year. And UFC fighters don't make that over their entire career. Oh, no. Not even close. Uh, not even the top guys. Like, No, not even close. Like, yeah. The top guys make five, ten million a year. Yeah. I mean, their lifetime. Yeah. They don't make that much. No. Like, the, that whole car show was inflated. He didn't make that much money. Oh, oh Billy says 40-year-old Ryan Bader is going to have to return to the UFC to fight and get destroyed by Aspinall. Oh, jeez. No, I think Bader's done. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> I think he should be done. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no. I, I was pretty disappointed that the fighters kind of... I mean, they didn't lose their lawsuit, but I wish they would have settled. Hey, um, cause I wish they would have gotten some rights. The last fight tonight, who was that? Um, 
Sabatini was supposed to fight tonight. Isn't he from uh, Bellator? Did he sign with the UFC? Uh, is it the same Sabatini? Pat Sabatini? Is it the same Sabatini? I don't know. So I heard Sabatini was supposed to fight, and I don't know if it was the same Sabatini. I'm like, did UFC sign that guy from Bellator? Uh, but I, I guess know. something happened where he didn't fight and some of the guys fought. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I know. Um, I, I know PFL put up some of the contracts from Bellator, like a limited amount, like basically like anybody that wants to buy them can buy them for certain amounts. Yeah, like Michael Van Page. <laughs> no, they they just lost him to free agency. Oh, he's free agent. That's why he left. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And towards the end of his career, he's like, "Well, I want to take a shot at the UFC." Oh, did you guys see the Kate Harrison promo tonight? No, I didn't. Billy says, all right, fam. It's almost 1.30 in the morning here. I'm out. Have a happy Easter, you guys. Night, fam. Night, Billy. Thanks, brother. Fuck, it's 3 o'clock here. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm, time, I, but I don't care. Yeah, I think I I'm pretty much ready to call tonight, too. I'm pretty, pretty out. <laughs> all right, man. All right, thanks, thanks, guys. Wyatt, Robert. Happy yeah, happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter, everybody. All right, thanks for for joining us. Um, oh God, what's next? Uh, I know we got basketball coming up, but till then, yeah, have everybody have a happy Easter. Basketball See everybody later. Next. Tomorrow? Um, no, there's no basketball there's no tomorrow. tomorrow huh? There's no basketball tomorrow. I didn't think so. I don't believe so. Not till I wouldn't think it's on Easter. Oh, there is two games on Easter. Oh, there is. What? What? What games? Both of the games, the final four. Oh. And then the know. national championship will be on. Oh no, this is Elite Eight, I guess. Okay. Apparently, there's Tennessee and Purdue and North Carolina State and Duke tomorrow. Oh yeah, no, Billy really. says Duke Do plays tomorrow. Purdue's playing tomorrow. <clears throat> okay. All right. So maybe we'll, I might do some basketball tomorrow on another channel. You might do. Right, yeah. Let me know if you do. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. As always, All right. we love you. We respect you. And we'll see Man. your fine asses next time.